Good evening, everybody. We are live with Assassin's Creed Unity. Um, I I'm starting. I mean, I think I'm sort of within my parameters for uh, normal start times, but I did say I was going to have a little bit of a later start tonight. Uh, I'm just tired. Um, as is making news, it's very hot. It's Canada is no exception. We actually, there's been a heat wave in Quebec, which I believe has claimed 40 lives now. So I am lucky in the sense that I do not feel that my life is in danger. Um, but uh, I had a later start today and I don't know. It's quite a quite a few things sort of working against uh, working against me in terms of just getting things done on a on a decent uh, decent schedule and such. So I thought it would be good to sort of compensate. Oh. Well, I'm sure that would have looked really cool if you guys could see my <laughs> my monitor. Uh, anyways, yeah. So I wanted to um, I want to take a second to just try and get my uh, my head straight, sort of get um, get everything back in order uh, before streaming. So I did, and now we are here with some Assassin's Creed. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything really major to talk about. At this point, I think I'm just going to be going through a little bit more of the story. It's interesting to see the uh, percent complete be so low, because I believe there's normally about 12 sequences or so in the Assassin's Creed games. And the plot has definitely picked up by quite a bit. But, um... I don't know, like, clearly I've been leaving a lot. Um, I've been spending less time with the game off, uh, off cast as I would like. So I, um, I suspect probably my, you know, is an accurate reflection of a lack of progress. I, they should have much less of a mystery than, than I do. Um, yeah, uh, with that in mind, oops, all right, let's see if there's a way that I can. Well, this guy's probably dead, but. Anyways, um, so the aim is here is going to be to do more main story missions, and then um, whether or not I do anything, I'm still trying to figure out how I do the side quests. Like, I, I more or less figured that I wouldn't be doing them on cast, um, but if there's an opportunity or if there's something that seems like it would be good, maybe I'll do just sort of like a postscript or something like that where I wind up, um, you know, I wind up doing some more of the... I wind up doing some more of the, um, uh, some more of the, you know, the the side missions and such um, live. But we'll figure that out. One of the, I mean, in some ways, one of the reasons I've been so regular with um, with Assassin's Creed is I'd kind of like to get get it done so that I can move on to some other things that I've got in my on my list. And that does include other Assassin's Creed games, and I'm actually very happy that I wound up doing this game because I, it has allowed me to form the opinion that this game is perhaps unfairly loathed, though I do think it has some... I do think it has... Uh, I, I think there are legitimate complaints uh, about the game. I just think that a little bit... I mean, a little bit like most gaming stories nowadays, it feels like the, you know you take what basically take what actually happened you know multiply it by 50 or 60 i just want to check a couple of things on my uh, volume here um and that that'll be a good prediction about the version of events that you're going to hear um okay my microphone seemed like it was peaking a little bit but anyway so that's um that's the best that I can do for sort of meandering my way through the opening five minutes and letting everybody come in. Um, let's do a quick catch up on the encyclopedia. So 
Uh, we've actually read all the newspapers, so it, I don't think we have anything else to worry about then. All right, then we will head towards the next uh, the next event. And again, I do apologize for the stuttering bit. So, um, I always say this at the at the beginning, but I mean it, it'll be no different this time. But I I think I've got a fairly comprehensive view of what's happening inside the game. Uh, so when I play this. Um, there, there are basically a couple of experiments that I ran, but I've, I've ran this um, the way I'm doing it right now. And um, the problem with this format is basically uh, in order to... So I'm playing this off of my OBS uh, screen because there is some kind of a bug when you run this thing in windowed mode with VSync on. Um, that causes it to sort of st start having this black flicker over the screen, and it's pretty it's pretty bad. Like some sometimes I'll be able to see the monitor and you know and play for a few seconds, and other times the game's like unplayable, um, and and very literally in the sense of like I can't see anything on a menu or anything like that. Um, so the way around that is to either disable VSync or to do it full screen. So why don't I do either of these things? Well, uh, when I disable VSync, what happens is Assassin's Creed Unity basically demands all of the available resources on my computer, and um, you know, and uses them for the crowds, the you know, the AI, the rendering, so on and so forth. Um, and what this specifically, so the the specific. Uh, effect that this has is that these little stutters that you, you see every once in a while, there's a warning that OBS gives in terms of um, encoding problems. And the encoding problems are basically the fact that Unity is taking up all the CPU cycles and uh, I'm not able to, you know, it, it doesn't have, it's not able to, um, it's not able to compress the, uh, the video at uh, 60 um, at 60 frames a second. So, what the VSync is basically doing? Um, if you guys aren't familiar with how VSync works, basically you can occasionally get this tearing look, or this, this like you'll know it when you see it. But basically, sometimes on your monitor, it can look like you know half the screen is not catching up with the other half, um, and everything sort of looks like it's torn in half. Um, and that usually happens when there is a mismatch between the frames, uh, frames per second, the, you know, the rate at which the, the game is playing, and your monitor's refresh rate. And so a way that uh, most games will get over that, uh, that difficulty is basically by deliberately constraining, the, um, deliberately constraining that frame rate to... Um, either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, but basically it matches it matches to your monitor is is how this thing gets fixed so um, That's What I have enabled and what this is doing is that you know Assassin's Creed unity no longer is Attempting to use like it's basically not trying to render the game at like 2,000 frames a second for no reason but um, the problem here, of course, is that difficulty that I mentioned before. For some reason, and I've, I've exchanged many emails with Ubisoft customer support, um, for whatever reason, this game cannot run in a windowed mode on my computer um, without this uh, unacceptable um, black stuttering. I will do the game and just, or the mission in just a little bit. I'll finish this, this account. So, so then the question is, why don't I do full screen? Well, this has been my biggest debate about streaming. Um, I don't like... So I am very opposed to the tendency of streamers to solve problems by buying new hardware. Um, I think this idea... And I, I remember very specifically, there was an Ottawa streamers meetup, and this guy was something saying something to the effect of, you know, if you want to have a successful stream, you gotta, you got to pay up for it. Referring to the hardware. This is not, this is not the right way to look at this. Um, the, um, and I mean, I, I, I didn't want to be so, I didn't want to be so difficult that I, um,
I don't want to be so difficult that I like raise the that I raise the issue in the moment. Um, but the, the the big problem here is that like this guy's sub count isn't really that much higher than me, um, and I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to like. So he's talking about turning pro. Um, so off of something like a, I was wondering if that was a, like a skeleton that had blown out of the model before, but no, she's getting fitted. Um, so I was, I was, you know, listening to this thing, this guy's talking about going pro. I mean, he's does, I mean, his sub, sub count isn't really that much higher than mine. Um, his followers are much higher than, than mine. Um, and I'm just thinking to myself, I was like, you know, you're telling people to buy these, you know, several thousand dollar computers, uh, in order to do streaming. And how are you supposed, like, you know, if you've got, like, double-digit subs, like, how are you supposed to get a return off of that? Like, you'll you'll bankrupt yourself before you ever... Um, Jesus, this is looking pretty bad. Sorry. I'm wondering if I would have been better to reset the, the computer. This is pretty intolerable. Yikes. Okay. Um, I'm debating... I'll, f I'll finish chasing this guy down. It might just be the part of the, the level that I'm in, but this is, this is bad. Um, actually, I'm gonna do a quick, um... I'm gonna do a quick trip to the task manager to see if I can find out who's... who's taken up all my cycles. Uh, everything is apparently at half... half strength. Okay then, um, there is no good ex explanation for what I'm what I'm experiencing right now. Sorry guys, I know this is a really meandering start, but okay. Well, that's not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay, so anyways, long story short, like the biggest thing I was gonna say is that there's no, it does not make any sense. Hey, paint bucket. Um. Having a little bit of uh, encoding difficulty here, but this is, I think, just a sad reality of streaming this game. Um, but yeah, so basically, the the real the real problem I had here is like if if somebody were to follow this advice, you know, without question, then essentially what they're doing is they're on a treadmill, spending more money than their stream will ever bring in, um, in some really kind of arbitrary and ill-defined goal of, you know, if you pay up for quality, then, you know, then you'll become a big streamer. And, um... I just think that most... Like, so most streams don't need the kinds of things that you, um... you associate with them. So lots of people, I think, could get by without having a face cam. Uh, lots of people could get by without having a green screen. Actually, I noticed the trend has gone away from green green screens recently, and I think that's a good thing. Um, and uh, I noticed some people are talking about using face cams, which have which are uh, which use SL, uh, SLRs. Um, and the aim here is for a higher quality image. But the problem is, is that webcams actually are pretty good at, for quality. Like, if you want to do a voice chat with somebody, usually you have some fairly high expectations. They give you a good, high quality, uh, high definition image um, at an affordable price. And they say, okay, well, I really want the depth of field. Well, they call it bokeh, but that's a slightly different thing than depth of field. Um, you know, I, I want that effect. It's like, okay, but then they, like, put the camera really close and they have a big old wide lens and it's never going to achieve depth of field because they have no goddamn idea how you can actually get depth of field. Um, so, all of this is to just give a, you know, this is a big axe to grind, apparently. All of this is to say is that most of the time that people tell you when you need to buy something on a computer, um, you don't actually need it. Um, and in the case of Assassin's Creed, so all of this is a long introduction to um, the one hardware purchase I am considering. 
which is a dedicated monitor. Um, and it's because uh, I've got a 16 by 10 monitor, which doesn't align very well with the, um, you know, with broadcast. Broadcast is normally at 16 by 9. And what this means is a lot of games I need to play in a windowed mode. And that's not my preference. Uh, and in the case of Assassin's Creed Unity, if I play full screen, then the image is all distorted. It's not good for the stream. It's not good for me. So if I had a 16 by 9 monitor, that would that would improve things. And of course, I could have it like at a, you know, a 144 refresh or something like that. So it looks nice for me or whatever. But the real the real um, consideration I have here is that if I run into more games like Assassin's Creed Unity, which have these technical problems, um, driven by the fact that uh, playing it in windowed mode or, you know, some games which just don't do like don't allow you the the aspect ratio options. Um, you know, that is one purchase for the stream that would help out. Yeah, exactly. Paint bucket. Um, that would be one thing that I think would help. But the catch is, is that I don't have a lot of cases like I've really been able to do a quality cast on every game that I've played except Assassin's Creed Unity. And in the case of Assassin's Creed Unity, the problem is, is what you experience, um, you know, earlier on here where it gets really stuttery. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm definitely not going to have a new monitor by the, by the end of today, so. What do you know about grain merchants? Good to see you, too. Most of them are very poor just now. Why? I have a lead on Germain. He has a woman named Marie buying up grain shipments and diverting them to a private dock. Marie Levesque? You know her. The Levesques have been Templars since the Third Crusade. Marie was the only one who argued against Germain's exile. I'm not surprised she's thrown in with him. Any idea where we might find her? Not her, no. But what little grain makes it to Paris these days is unloaded at the Hotel de Ville docks. Promising. I'll start there. Perhaps I can learn something of Madame Levesque's whereabouts. Okay. I will admit, this. so little plots like this I quite like. Um, I think one of the things that kept me from becoming as interested in uh, Assassin's Creed Unity for a long time was that you would have this bit of um, sort of historical tourism. So, you know, we ran into the Marquis de Sade and we, you know, we met um, uh, Mirabeau um, and, you know, we get to see all of these people. Um, but there isn't sort of we're not feeling the same we're not quite feeling the currents of history in the game where we're just sort of saying is like you know we've we've got a character that we've run into here and this character has the name of a of an old famous person and um now you now you've met this famous person um you can actually say sort of napoleon um counts like this right because napoleon has in my view a pretty good uh introduction but it's like, what do you know about merchants as the top 10 pickup lines of the 18th century? I think she already likes us, but I, I'll, I'll try that next time and we'll, uh, we'll see how, we'll see how it works. So, you know, like, it's cool to meet Napoleon and all that, and I'm sure he's going to come back and, and be important. Um, but right now it's just, we know that there was a, well, he wasn't a general at this point, but you know, we, we know that there was a, a guy in charge of cannons. <laughs> I think it was a major at this point. I, I need to remember exactly, um, his role, but, um, basically, um, and his name was Napoleon and, you know, he helped us out find the, the Templars, but this, like, this doesn't really this doesn't have this quite quite the same satisfaction of um, some of your encounters with people like... Ch so, like, a great example here would be the character of Machiavelli in Assassin's Creed 2. Um, so, the thing that's interesting 
is that there's always this tension about whether or not Machiavelli is really on the assassin's side. And if you read Machiavelli, specifically if you read The Prince, Cesare Borgia is used as an example a lot in that book. And so if you, if you know that aspect of The Prince, and I mean, again, like the point here isn't to say, you know, you can't enjoy um, some of the most popular Assassin's Creed games you know, properly if you've, if you've not read Machiavelli. But, um, you know, if you know that fact, fa if you know that fact about the work, um, and they turn that into a plot point, all of a sudden you have this question, like, oh, wow, I've learned a little something about the, you know, it, th this is a new take on how history went. Uh, and what becomes interesting about that is if you think that um, Machiavelli does not have is not loyal to the assassins then you're sort of wondering okay when is this betrayal going to happen he obviously really liked uh Cesare and you know when is he going to throw in with him um or if you don't believe that he is but you can say you know this is you know this is the most pragmatic i mean and this i think is the better interpretation you know because the Machiavelli is far less uh less popular book but a really good one is the um, discourses on Livy um, and that is his ba that is basically the book that talks about his preferred form of government which is a republic uh, and so what you the image that you can potentially get is a an incredibly pragmatic thinker who is capable of realizing the capability of his opponent Cesare uh, and is able to write very well uh, and very convincingly about him to use him in his his book on principalities um, even though he is, is sort of a sworn enemy um, and so as a result it makes it makes for a really interesting just sort of take on this person whereas running into you know the Marquis de Sade as somebody who gives you a mission um, it doesn't really tell you something it's like what's really interesting or what makes these stories really interesting is when um, is when the uh, when Assassin's Creed gives you sort of a a new take on history. It's like this person was in this location, but it's not for the reason that the history books tell you. Um, is usually when I think these stories become the most interesting. Um, and so this particular mission I like because what it's got now is like ah you thought that the pro like so there's an interesting story going on in the background here i think we actually see this in the uh the newspapers let me see if i can bring it up um it's got to be one of the later ones um le patriot Yeah, once the king's minister of the treasury and his much beloved, much beloved public figure Jacques Necker is leaving Paris in disgrace, his attempted reforms as popular as they once were came too late and changed too little to avert the recent upheaval. We say good riddance to the Swiss meddler. Um, actually, I think I'll take a quick second here and bring up some real history on this. Um, uh, where is it? So the financial crisis of the Ancien Regime, this is just, um, this is basically just uh, Wikipedia at this point. Uh, in 1774, Louis XVI ascended the, the throne in the middle of a financial crisis uh, in which the state faced a budget deficit and was nearing bankruptcy. This was in part due to France's costly involvements in the Seven Years' War and later the American Revolutionary War. In May 1776, Finance Minister Turgot was dismissed after failing to enact reforms. The next year, Jacques Necker, a foreigner, was appointed Comptroller General, uh, General of Finance. He could not uh, be made an official minister because he was a Protestant. Necker realized the country's extremely regressive tax system uh, subjected the lower classes to a heavy burden, while numerous exemptions existed for the nobility and the clergy. He assumed that the country could not be taxed higher. The tax exemptions for the nobility and the clergy... Sorry. He argued that the country could not be taxed higher. 
that tax exemptions for the nobility and the clergy must be reduced and the proposed borrowing uh, proposed that borrowing more money would solve the country's financial shortages. Necker published a report to support this claim that underestimated the def deficit by roughly 36 million livres uh, and proposed restricting the power of the Parlement. It was not received well by the king's minister, and Necker, hoping to bolster his position, position, argued to be made a minister. The king refused, Necker was dismissed, and Charles Alexandre de Calonne was appointed to the controllership. Uh, Calonne uh, initially spent liberally, but he quickly realized the financial situation, uh, critical financial situation, and proposed a new tax code. Um, so anyways, this is, we're, we're done with Necker. But basically, there's a question that you can ask of this time period, which is, you know, you've got a, so you, you have a, a pretty, I mean, again, your political economist is going to talk here for a minute, but, you know, you have a pretty reliable um, observation of saying that um, sort of fiscal crises precede, um, you know, sort of social or social crises or revolutions and whatnot. Um, because, you know, as, as we've talked about a lot, I mean, it's worth remembering that I started playing Assassin's Creed 3 last year on July 4th so that we could, you know, we could do it in time. And then I did July 14th for Unity. Um, and so we've talked a lot about the Seven Years War and the American Revolutionary War as causes for these revolutions. Uh, in the sense of the the discontent, basically, when you have a financial crisis, you need to decide what people, you know, you've made a bunch of promises in the form of your fiscal policy, and you can't keep all of them. And so how you decide whose promises get fulfilled and whose promises get broken um, will decide whether or not your country um, does, does well in the end. Um, and so you can raise this question, right? You've got you've got the National Assembly and these different figures, and a lot of this is being brought on by a financial crisis and by the inability of people to get food. But what's really interesting about this time is that they didn't really solve any of the underlying problems. There was a lot of revolution, there was a lot of change, and there were people who were able politicians um, accomplishing certain things, and yet they were not able to bring about the social um, reforms that sort of caused the whole difficulty in the first place. Um, so what becomes interesting in this case is you can say, so you ask the question, you know, why are these people who are having a revolution about, you know, their ability to obtain basic needs? That's not exactly like, obviously the causes of the French Revolution are very broad and, you know, um, subject to many books, but, you know, meeting basic requirements of day-to-day -day living is certainly a very good motivator for the people to, to want change. Um, and the answer of Assassin's Creed is that it was actually part of a larger plot uh, on the Templars' part, and they very deliberately withheld grain, that there wasn't any kind of a natural reason for that, but it was actually this particular fight between two hidden factions in history that resulted in this particular set of circumstances, which will ultimately lead to the execution of Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette. Um, and so... I think, personally, these games are at their best when they do things like that. You've missed the key, you dopes! Where are you going? Bro, goddamn you! Time to chase the boat. Don't touch the water. Okay. I have a feeling this will be tricky with the controls, but... quite what I wanted to do. Please go down. Please go down. Sacre bleu! Okay, we're doing okay. I feel like in this case, more so than some of the other missions, I'm actually managing to follow a path that the level designers sort of brought out for me. <laughs> ah, clever. 
That's a nice, see, little touches like that I like quite a bit. Um, all right, we're gonna jump up. Um, sometimes these levels are a little too clever in their design for me, uh, and I wind up sort of missing fairly obvious places to do some fast movement. Um, whereas here it's very clear that I was intended to sort of follow that particular path and have something sort of thrown in my way. Um, oh, good. Captain! Any problems? No, madame. You have your orders? Here, madame. Good. And I'm instructed to tell you to make certain one of the bags leaks. Uh, yes, madame. Get to work! Marie Levesque. Marie Levesque was the daughter of nobility dating back to the 13th century. By the time of the revolution, Levesque's had fallen on hard times, and in an effort to bolster the family finances, Marie married Thomas Lobby, a scion of a more recently ennobled and more prosperous family in 1771. Marie's father insisted that the groom take the bride's surname, and the Lobbys, eager for legitimacy, agreed. Marie was, by all accounts, a fierce intellect and a sharp wit, and within a few years she had rebuilt the Levesque fortune. The Levesque were staunch Templar traditionalists dating back almost to their founding, but it's surprising to see her show up as part of the new Templar business. During the revolution, she deftly played both sides against each other, maintaining much of the, the lavish lifestyle to which she'd grown accustomed while avoiding the worst ire of the radicals. Much of her fortune was spent buying up as much grain as she could acquire and distributing it amongst the poor and needy, and she gave generously towards the reformation of Paris's prisons. <laughs> Presumably the commentator does not agree with this assessment. Okay, so looks like I'm stealing something and I'm not allowed to trigger alarms. How much you want to guess I'm not going to accomplish the, the latter? There's no timer on this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take it slow. I actually the big thing about these goals is that they do make the game more fun if you achieve them, in my view. Hmm, this might be bad. I mean, that sort of counts as an air assassination. Okay, I should be able to just run straight up after this guy. <laughs> Revelations did a linear chase sequence, the best in this. I agree completely. I was really, really excited pretty much every minute that I was playing Revelations past a certain point. Um, Revelations is a... Okay, so there's some things that didn't work for me about Revelations. I really don't know why they felt the need to include a tower defense game. Um, but beyond... Beyond that, this guy's gonna get mad at me in a minute. Uh, I've been trying to avoid this. Okay. Uh. Oh wow. Okay, I can't take. I I thought I would be able to take out the bell, but. Okay. I hit the wrong button for for health. My bad. How you doing, Eagle? 
Um, but yeah, so um, as you said, the chase sequences in in Revelations were were spectacular, and I think one of my favorite sequences is the fire ship. Um, I thought that did a really good job. So I'm oh, okay. That works. Actually, that'll probably be a little bit easier for taking out some of these guys. I'm actually not one of these people who thinks that linearity is a bad thing in games. Um, Oh. I mean, no loot, but... Typical, it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're completely wasted, so you're doing really good. All right. Glad to hear it's going well for you then, Ego. Okay, so I can get rid of that clock now. Oh, maybe I can't. I need to be able to jump. That was a... Jesus. I thought I got a parry in there, but apparently I was wrong. Okay. I think I'm going to hang out here for a little bit so I can disable that, uh, that alarm. Still didn't set any alarms. <laughs> okay, well, looks like I gotta kill this guy one way or the other. Wasn't elegant, but there you go. But yeah, so as you said, um, I you know, this is one of the things too, is that sometimes a... Um, sometimes it's not the worst thing in the world to be technologically constrained, so... Um, in one sense, it's really cool to have, um, you know, to have this wonderfully realized Paris and so many crowded people during all the revolutions and such. But then you carry, uh, you carry with it the risk that, so the big problem I'm running into, I don't think I mind the, the fact that, um, I don't think I mind the fact that people are in the way. I think that's by design. But then you face the fact that the controls leave something to be desired, and then that actually creates that creates genuine frustration. Yeah, I already looted him. Um, so in this, this is actually a really good example. Um, I am. I mean, I'm like everyone else when it comes to giving advice to people who make games. It's really easy to think that because you play games, you know, you know how it all works and, and you can tell people you should do X. And it's hard to suppress that urge. Um, so whenever I give feedback, I try to... I, I know I'm kind of... I know I'm kind of prone to, to offering my own opinions on things. So what I do is I explain the problem first. And then I, um, you know, and, and ideally like how it makes me feel or, or whatever. And then I say, I think it might be because, you know, dot, dot, dot. Oh, okay. Oof. 
I think I'm just gonna get out of here. Well, so much for my, uh, my health. never find me here um, but yeah so to to describe what I'm encountering and because I because I sort of know that I'm going to I'm, I'm always going to fail to keep myself from uh, from offering the opinion um, I will allow myself that but I'll allow it at the end after I've expressed the the thing I'm feeling as a character Yeah. I haven't played Origins, but I, I hear it's rather good. Palais Luxembourg. Hmm. What are you up to there? Anyway, we did uh, complete the challenges, so that's nice. But yeah, so a really good example here would be, you know, I can say, so like one thing that doesn't work as well is the controls suck. There, there is no information whatsoever that is conveyed um, by that sentence. Slightly better. Um, when I, you know, I, I feel like the. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll try and express these as, as ways that I might give in something like a, a bug report or something like that, you know. I feel like the game is misinterpreting, um, you know, is, is mis misinterpreting certain uh, commands. Like, I'm not climbing when I intend to climb, and I am, you know, I'm very often, like, hopping onto ledges when I actually just want to fall down the edge. Um, or I do not seem to be capable of jumping from one ledge to another. I'm fairly certain that you can do that in this game, but I have very rarely been able to actually accomplish that fairly minor feat. Um, I think I'm actually going to head towards this viewpoint. I'm going to take the scenic route just so I can get a little, um, a little bit more information about Paris. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the, the more specific I can get, and obvious, I mean, so, I suppose nowadays, like, nobody's get. and okay, look, I'll be honest, like, especially when I'm given, especially when people are saying stuff to me, like, it's really easy to give a sharp reply, um, and I could probably stand to get better at, like, just calming down. Um, I mean, having a live broadcast really does make that difficult. On Twitter, you can at least kind of step back for a minute and wait until you reply. If it's live on broadcast, um, all the incentives are in the wrong the wrong spot. But, um, but you know, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I don't think anybody's really guaranteed politeness online. And that is, I think, largely a bad thing. But I also think it kind of carries with it this idea that, you know, people who sort of expect a, a certain tone but are unwilling to give it, um, it does sometimes have this nice side effect of, like, they, you know, they get as good as they give sometimes. Um, and I would rather it not be that way, but I prefer that to, you know, one group being sort of constantly... Um, you know, constantly in a position where they are able to command um, a certain level of treatment, um, but never give it to another. I mean, we probably live in a situation where that's not properly balanced, but the big idea here is that, you know, I think it's fair to say that nobody's really guaranteed politeness on the internet, and ultimately you decide whether or not it's worth listening to this person if they're not going to speak to you a certain way. Um, so... Um, 
So like with that in mind, if like I need to think about what, you know, what am I trying to accomplish here? If I, you know, sent in some email um, about Assassin's Creed and said, I'll just uh, get this out of the way first. Prior to the revolution, Saint-Germain-des-Prés was a popular area for nobility to have their country houses and the town's abbey was one of the richest in France. The site's first church was raised in the year five, uh, 558. The revolution effectively turned the abbey from church to storehouse, and the 15,000 tons of gunpowder were stock, uh, stockpiled in the refractory. Sorry, refactory. Uh, perhaps inevit uh, inevitably, an explosion destroyed part of the former abbey in August of 1794. Not that this prevented it from becoming the prison l'abbé, uh, where some of the most atrocious massacres would take place in September 1793. Our sense of linear time perhaps inevitably exploded when Abstergo couldn't be bothered to fact-check their database. Sounds like you've got your plans for the rest of the night, Ego. Um, but yeah, like, ultimately, so if I submit some kind of a bug report uh, regarding the controls, I need to really ask, like, what am I trying to accomplish with the, you know, this this set of, uh, this, you know, this set of um, statements. You know, if I, if I want to feel... I don't know, like some kind of big man or something like that. Sure. Hey, jackasses, learn how to design your games. You know, every every designer should know how to do controls. Like, oh my god, why do you work for Ubisoft? Um, and, you know, I'll get whatever satisfaction I get out of being that guy. And I would fully expect every QA team to encounter it to ignore it because it conveys absolutely no information and if even, you know, even the most even-tempered um, and, you know, trusting... So, like, there's a couple, a, a really good... Okay, so Weather Factory, like, um, Alexis Kennedy and Lottie Bevan. I never cease to be amazed at how good they are at taking the good out of some feedback even when people are being very impolite. I could have sworn I got that parry, but anyways. Uh, I'm I am very impressed by their ability to um, to handle feedback and to make the most of it. Um, Bonjour, I'm just gonna refill everything because I am rich. Actually, you know what? Let's see if we can get some. I want to get some good gear, but also fancy gear. Uh, we'll save the weapon for later. Actually, first of all, outfits. So Belek, Edward, Arno, ooh. That does look rather classy, but I think I'm going to do my best with uh, with what the game gives me, so. What are we looking at here? Ooh, this is the, uh... It's a little more costly than I think, than I think I can manage. Um, but there were a couple, I think this is gonna be pure fashion at this point. The mask looks a little ridiculous, but... Oh, you know what? We'll go for it. I don't even think that gives me any bonuses. I think I'm just going to try and do something a little... This might work. Oh, I think I already own this, actually. OK, 
Okay, so good melee. Um, what have I got this? Health, stealth. I'm not sure I want to give these guys up. I think I might actually be out of options for the next little bit. Because of the stats, it's all about the style point. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not sure if this is more stylish. That I did kind of want to get rid of that hood, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna work with these because I mean, you have to have a certain level of confidence to wear these pants. Um, and apparently, when I make ridiculous sums of money and more ridiculous than what I presently have, uh, I can worry about unlocking the other outfits. Oh, looks like there's a thief to tackle. But yeah, so um, if on the other hand, I'm, you know, I'm not, like, I, I don't assign some value to making a developer feel bad, then what I specifically want to do is I want to describe exactly where the game is going wrong. And, you know, there's a little give and take in these cases, like, sometimes... It's the developer's job to figure out where, you know, where the source of the problem is. Like, if somebody says the controls don't work, well, could you be a little more specific? Well, when I try to climb up onto walls, it doesn't always seem to respond the right way. You know, if you can do some question and answer, then that'll probably help. That'll help diagnose the problem a little bit better than... Jesus. You know, than just leaving it at that. But, you know, I mean, obviously these people... They, like, they do this for a living for a reason. Like, it sometimes you can't answer it all on the first crack uh, crack at the problem. Um, but again, like, the, the really important thing here is that there's no point in any of this reasoning that says, yes, being rude to the developer is 100% the way that you're going to accomplish your goals here. Um... And yet, it very frequently feels like that is... That's kind of the option people people go for. And I wish I kind of understood that, uh, that impulse better. Like, I know with games journalists, there really does seem to be this feeling that... You know, I like games, so I should be able to be a games journalist too. And this guy has a games journalist job that I don't have because they're taking it. And as a result, you know, I, I resent them because they're keeping me from getting this goal. I mean, I, I would be fascinated. I, it, I know for a fact there are people who think this way. I would be fascinated to know what steps these people have actually taken towards becoming game journalists. I mean, it, I know PC Gamer is always looking for submissions. Um, I also know that writing is actually really hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on... I'm sitting on a blog post right now, which is over... I think it's getting close to the 4,000 word mark. Uh, it used to be 5,000. And, you know, it's easy to put pages, you know, words down on paper, but man, to try and get them into something coherent that people are actually going to read, that is a hard job. Um, so one of the things that is... Uh, actually, so speaking of skills that I could stand to learn, one of the most important things is there is a... There's a, a very good value in um, and I so when you know about a certain topic, it is very easy to write everything that you know as opposed to writing what the reader needs to know. So you know, if I talk about an econ subject, 
I could probably go on at great length about, you know, how I came to know these things and some of the interesting anecdotes about, you know, why, why this idea became popular or whatever. But sometimes you just need the fact and you need the reason why that fact has to be true uh, and why it is more than just an opinion. And the ability to discern between that and um, showing off, for lack of a better term, even if you don't know that's what you're doing, um, is a well, for me, I find it very difficult. Um, it might actually be easier for, for other people, but that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm so slow at writing stuff, because I need to, I need to revise and I need to cut it down, and I still feel like... I feel like what gets... what stays in is not as exciting as what was cut. <laughs> and um, the point is staler, although at least it's shorter. Um, okay, we've got uh, Stilettos has sex. Uh, you can never be a journalist. I can't do games. You like just to... Yeah, there's a couple. I, I think I know how I would approach game reviews if I had to do them. But obviously games journalism doesn't just mean reviews. Uh, tell the fact, not the story. You learn that in history writing well, uh, essays. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Painback. Okay. The Sorbonne is so famous that its founder, the Honorable Robert de Sorbonne, the uh, chaplain of Louis the Ninth, and the first advocate of culture for all is often overlooked. Isn't that disgraceful? It would be like somebody walking around Hastings and not spending every waking moment, excuse me, thinking of me. Having struggled to become a doctor of theology, he sought to facilitate the education of underprivileged children like himself. St. Louis offered him a house on uh, Rue Compulia? Con, sorry, Con... Compelia? I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce the G or not. Anyways. Along with his few, uh, a few of his own outbuildings, where Sabon subsequently built his school. Three centuries later, Richelieu observed that the Sorbonne was failing, falling into ruin and set about renovating it. In 1629, he undertook to rebuild the entire establishment, provided a place uh, was left for his tomb. This is duly done. The subsequent masterpiece built by Girardon was carefully pro uh, protected during the revolution. Then in 1816, re-established in the chapel of the Sorbonne, uh, once the return of Louis XVIII had been made official. Towards the end of the 19th century, the old Sorbonne of the Cardinal was rebuilt and extended. The Sorbonne has often been the subject of derision since the Renaissance scholar Rabelais made reference to the bugs called the uh, Sorbon Sorbonnages that devoured the intelligence of thinkers. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so um, this is a good example of how like so this is this is a it's not exactly a smoking gun because it's an unrelated issue but like it's an idea of the psychology of people who are nasty on the internet specifically as relates to games and i think to a certain extent that's probably what might drive certain behaviors towards um towards developers that people feel like they can people feel like they can make games because they play games and so when the game doesn't meet their expectations they feel like they can tell they feel like they can tell other people their business and um, they get nasty about it because of this sort of sense of entitlement I would be I would challenge the premise that the people who made a bad game set out to make a bad game I think I know there's like examples of people who make low quality games uh, in order to make some some quick money but I think those are pretty obvious when you look at them you used to hate Sean as a character back when you played 2 but you started reading the database entries and you realize he's a magnificent bastard I have a bit of a love hate why like as, as everybody's learned, especially over the past couple of days, I really do like being silly um, when the when the time is right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that thief. I wonder if I can tackle him from the rooftop. Just a good old... Good old, like, eagle... Yeah, okay. 
You know what? I'm gonna take this first. Luxembourg? Shay's Templar outfit. Spoiler alert. Um... But yeah, so I like it's a, this is actually something that happened to me with the Civilization games. Was I noticed as time went by, they would be reading out history, and they would add more and more goofy bits. Like they'd add more and more commentary, and I actually like little, you know, just little tiny touches of personality to you know to lighten the the potentially stale um, subject. I apologize for the for the stuttering here. I'm gonna try and. Okay, well, I'm going to get into combat, which is probably going to wreak havoc with my... I'm assuming it's because I'm in a new district that's creating that problem, but I'm going to stop running around as much as I can. Um, and then I think, like, Civilization V and Civilization VI really... F I think they they leaned a little too heavily on the silly and sometimes lost the point that they were trying to make. And so I sometimes feel that way about the Sean bits, but on on your I I'm on your side, paint bucket. Like I, I do I do like the con like when the commentary hits, it hits. So and I would I would prefer it I'd prefer it rather than um say you're not allowed to have it unless it's perfect. But yeah, I mean, un so if the impulse is that people feel mad that, you know, they're not able to work in games and game developers are, and if the games are not fun, then they feel like it's a personal affront and that there is somebody who is... It's not just that somebody's stopping them from being able to play good games, but somebody's stopping them from being able to make good games. You know, if it's going to be bad, at least it should be bad at their hands, I suppose. And perhaps that's the reason why... So, like, the, the reason why I'm curious about this stuff is that, in principle, you would assume that people um, should be interested in making the, making the game as good as possible. Like, the feedback should be quality. It shouldn't be, hey, jackass, you ruined the series. Um, but, I mean, I'm not... You know, I'm not a Vulcan, and I don't think anybody else is. I don't think every speech act is, you know, very literally a series of... You know, when I say somebody should go fuck themselves, I don't literally think that they are going to go back home and, you know... Um, so... But I will say, like, sometimes sometimes this sort of stuff... It's, well, it's like we were talking about here. Like, this is a pretty decent game, all told. And, like, the problem I'm specifically running into has nothing... T well, okay, it, it has a little bit to do with the, the quality of the game itself, but a lot of this is just driven by the particulars of my streaming setup and has nothing to do with the game. If I was playing this game full screen, I would... I've never dropped a frame below 60 when I play this um, offcast. Okay. Marie Levesque is holding a gala at Le Plat Luxembourg. Infiltrate the palace and kill her before she starts a riot. Ooh, okay. This will be fun. You were right. Marie Levesque had men unloading the barges and taking the grain to the Palais du Luxembourg. If the people think the royal family has been hoarding food in a time of famine. Bedlam. Just the sort of thing Germain seems to thrive on. Madame Levesque is yours. I'll find the stolen grain and try to get it out of there before anyone finds it. Stay out of trouble. Don't get caught. It's actually kind of cool. We took the mask around the time that we're going to a party, I think. Yeah, actually, um, the French economist um, help. Jean help. Tirole. Help me. Help. Hand over the powder. I can only get my hands on that guard. Lovely party. You've outdone yourself this time. Merci. Now pray, excuse me, I need to see to my husband. 
I do like these setups for these missions. I'm going to try and do it somewhat in line with the way that they, they're they suggesting I do it. I'm assuming I need to do some create a distraction with the fireworks and uh, explore the area and create opportunities. Yep. This can go two ways. Hand over the... Merci, monsieur. Are you all right? Fine, fine. If you can see me off safely, I promise you have a show of a lifetime. Far be it from me to ignore an artist in need. Okay, so I'm gonna do a side a side mission, I guess. <laughs> I'm assuming these guys to the right are gonna cause some trouble, but Bonjour! What a stylish... <laughs> what a stylish way to dispatch these gentlemen. <laughs> Maybe I can finally get some of my medicine back. You didn't enjoy it because you probably sucked at it? Oh, I'm going to feel bad now. Thank you, my friend. I only wish I could reward you properly. No need. The distraction will be more than enough. What was that? Nothing. Okay. Let's see if we can find... There's the young woman by the window. Yeah, right there. 30 meters. Guys are definitely tough. <laughs> Damn it. God damn it. I just wanted to hear the lady. I didn't want to fight these guys. Oh, God damn it! Yeah, I think I'm gonna. You know, I'm just gonna let myself die on this. But yeah, so Jean Triol uh, is writing a popular book on this subject, and his feeling is that um, it's not that the populist movements are correct. Um, but in, in fact, the problem is, is that, um, you know, the, the people sort of responsible for disseminating the knowledge that, you know, that leads to good economic policy have sort of failed in their Were it only in my power, I would burst these prison bars asunder and fight my way to freedom. Every man in prison here would, but such is not to be our fate, I fear. 
How romantic. I thought that was a loud a ladder. Alright. Okay, that's gonna be a problem. Hope that sucks. I think that's a palace and garden of Luxembourg, but Not exactly the move I wanted to pull, but we'll see how this goes. So long as he doesn't... No, I don't think he's supposed to be in here. <laughs> okay, hopefully we get some of the medicine back. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to get the guy... I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the key. I should be able to lockpick it, but, uh, okay, we had a database entry for locations. Play Jardin de Luxembourg. In 1612, Marie de Medici, widow of Henry IV of France, purchased houses there from the Duke of Pinay Luxembourg to build a sumptuous palace on the uh, to the designs of the French architect Salomon de Brosse. She wanted to call it the Medici Palace, but the Parisians, who hated her, kept using the name Luxembourg. Yes, she's one of those Medicis, but a hundred years after Ezio knew them. In 1750, the Luxembourg became the first museum of Paris, where visitors could view paintings from the royal collection. In 1793, the Luxembourg Palace was briefly converted into the Maison Nationale du Surette, or National Prison. Danton was detained there before being sent to the guillotine, having uh, done the same himself for so many of his enemies. Ouch! Nice little dig there. Of course, you wouldn't expect an Abstergo historian to be sympathetic to an assassin sympathizer, would you? Also, I think it's fair to say that Danton kind of deserves it. After 1801, Bonaparte offered the building to the French Senate, the function it still serves today. Transformations overseen by the architect Alphonse de Guizot uh, in 1836 modified the overall structure to the extent that Marie de Medici would probably not have recognized her former abode. This garden, however, is a favorite among Parisians. Okay, so I think the first thing I should do is a quick eagle sight to see what I'm I'm dealing with. So it does look like like a lot of these guys do have their backs to me. Just need to find a way in. Oh. Promising. Ah, damn it. Sorry, I was not paying attention. Ah, okay, that accomplished nothing. <laughs> I'm assuming I can't just jump over this thing. No. Try to be a little sneakier to make sure that I don't, uh, I don't rouse any suspicions. Just get me out of here. Uh, it's a level three. That's why they want me to take out the guy. So he does have a patrol route, which will be good. Oh. Less clear how I'm going to be able to get the guy, though. We'll see. We'll see what his path does. Jesus. Get you. 
Oh Jesus, he is tough. Okay, I'm definitely gonna set off an alarm here. Yeah, this is... Ah, damn it, I hit the medicine too early. All right, well, I'll do my best with what I got here, but. I really tried to dodge that. <laughs> Holy crap. One of the problems with getting swarmed this way is it's really hard to aim your uh, your attack on the the guys who are shooting you. I'm getting slightly better at parrying this guy. Though. Ah, Jesus. Yeah. So if you're in the middle of a combo, you can't uh, you can't jump back. I think that explains where I've where I feel like I've been cheated. Okay, we should be able to clear him out. Okay, we did it. Now I'm getting rid of those damn bells. As well as looting the crap out of everybody and hopefully getting some health back. Yeah, calm down, calm down. You want money? I have money. Just give me out and it's yours. The barks are kind of fun, but... Help us, please. Go, go. Friend, how are I was told there was loot in here. I was misinformed, apparently. Jesus, there's so many guys. Well, that didn't quite have the intended effect. Jesus Christ, I'm so bad at this. Oh, brutal. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to do that all over again. I'm gonna take some water. Yeah, one thing I was saying a little bit earlier, so one of the things that I can say about um, Revelations uh, versus uh, Revelations versus um, Unity, let's say, is the fact that there is less, like there's basically less in the way. So linear paths aren't the worst thing in the world to run into because they, I think they allowed for these better chase sequences or, you know, just generally um, the obstructions were created through the design of the level rather than the crowds, which I mean, there's a certain degree of control that the designers have over them, but I'm not entirely sure, like running down an alley into a mob of people was, was ever really designed unlike, say, that rather good example earlier on where I was tailing the uh, the ship and the game sort of 
you know, produced this, this falling crate in front of me, which I thought was a nice little touch. It kind of kept me on my toes and I had to figure out what I was doing. Figure I might as well get the sink while I'm here. Is that two guards in front there? It'd be great to know if there's a way that I can just sort of sneak in. I think it might be through one of those upper levels and then just go down the stairs. But we'll see. I'm assuming there's going to be rooftop um, sort of assassins as well. Or not assassins, but like guards. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna guess the front door is not the way to go. Oh, hello. Drop, please. Thank you. I wish I knew where uh, Toma Leves is. Damn it. That's odd. Okay, so that's at a lower level. There apparently is a rifleman just in front of me, though. Okay, <laughs> glad to see that I'm going to have some frame <laughs> frame drops in the middle of the mission. Okay, I think I'm just going to run around the edge and cause him, cause him some grief. If he moves forward, then I'm just going to run and kill him. If he turns his back, then I'll, I'll hit him then. Okay. I would really love to look at the fireworks, but <laughs> I have a feeling that's a great way for me to die. Okay. I really do apologize for the the stuttering, especially because they tend to happen at the exciting moments, so it creates uh... Oof, yeah, I'm not going through there. Maybe my only option, though. There are a lot of guards in that spot. Well, I suppose I can do it as they say the Levantine way and just <laughs> leap from the leap from the skies and <laughs> take her out on a suicide mission. I wonder if she's going to go into another room or if she's always just going to stay in the ballroom here.
everyone all right here? More wine, anyone? So glad to see you. I do hope you're not thinking of leaving. The evening's only just beginning. So pleased you could make it. Make sure they search the wine cellar soon. I want everyone here when the grain is found. Okay, so I'm going to assume that she just does a big circle through the... Through the room. I suppose I can... This will probably cause suspicion, but... Oops. Apparently these guys just don't, <laughs> don't care. All right, well, despite the fact that this <laughs> clearly should be alerting everyone to my presence, I'm going to wait until she walks by, and then I'm going to do the aerial strike on the, the two guards. Oh, I can't wait to see what you think about what I just did to Paint Bucket. If you thought the... Yeah, so presumably they are suspicious about that body. No, oh, busted. Fuck, that was bad. Assassinator, damn it! <laughs> well, so much for the, uh... Oh, fuck. I was gonna say so much for the, uh, no alarms. I really don't want to die here just because I don't want to go through all that trouble again. I kind of thought I would use the blade... You know what? It's not worth it. I know how to get back, and I don't think it'll be that hard to... I don't think it'll be that hard to, um... to jump down on her, but... So yeah, the problem I ran into... I didn't realize that the distance on the blades was so short, so I wound up wasting, like, three of them. Inside, thank you. So I'll admit, I do kind of like the whole infiltration thing. Like, I, I find that. Ah, damn it. I think he's alone, otherwise, this will not go well for me. Oh, well, he's got a friend. Why couldn't I dodge? Oh, God. Oh, no! Oh, you 
he's gonna go for an alarm bell. Damn it! Alright, just kill me. I need to I need to use my eagle sight more. Sorry, I'm, we're not making any progress tonight. Maybe I should just spend more time on my on my own on this. <laughs> Although I will also admit, I I do tend to get. Uh, tilted quite a bit whenever the whenever the um, whenever the um, the stream starts stuttering because I'm kind of aware that that's like that's that's affecting what you guys are seeing. That's not really like that doesn't explain why I'm sucking. I'm sucking because I'm I'm getting impatient, but it is making me a little more. Um, Oh god, there's another one. God damn it. Okay, so I gotta search those corpses before I do anything. I am glad that my uh, my blades were restored. That helps me quite a bit. Mm. Surprise! Oh no, he's gonna ring the bell. Cool, okay, well. It's one bell down. Oh no. Where are you? Got it. God. So that, unfortunately, was me not realizing I was on the same level as her. Because I easily could have finished the. I gotta finish the mission right there. And now I have to deal with the elites. Damn it. Yeah, I know she's incapacitated. I can't possibly think of any other reason why I can't be getting in closer. I genuinely want to finish this off game. Thank you, thank you for the advice. Well, at least I should be happy they're not dinging the alarm, but... I really don't want to die this time. <laughs> Thank God. Hopefully these guys have medicine on them. I, I... No game. I know. Believe me, I want this to be over as much as you do. Remember what I told you, Marie. Oui, Maman. Francois Thomas Germain, for your crimes against the Templar Order, you are cast out. 
Let any man offering succor to the exile share his fate. Boom. The way speaks to me. No, it's mine, De La Serre. De La Serre! Milady, you have a caller. I need your help, Marie. You were right. King Louis's been talking to all sorts he shouldn't have. Plotting against the revolution out of one side of his mouth, while he promises to support the Constitution out the other. Good. I trust you can get this information into the proper hands, Monsieur de Peltier. Of course, Grandmaster. With this evidence in hand, the King's conviction is certain. I will say, I think I've said this before, but one thing that is kind of interesting is the way that they make it a, um... Like a... It becomes a murder mystery. Oh, crap. Tragically, she was murdered by an unknown assailant during a celebration of the Palais Royal's conversion into a prison late in 1792. Assassins 5, Templar 0. Let's see if I can survive this. Damn it. I am not gonna survive this at all. <laughs> well, I'll probably become anonymous. Um, but yeah, so um, I do rather like, so I like the, uh, in the original games you have, so I could do without the, the modern things, although apparently that's not really an unpopular opinion. Um, but I always thought it was really interesting when you would go into the animus and you'd have this, oh my God, do I really need to, okay. This game wants me to do it right, but I'll get it done. We've, we've got a lot of practice now. <laughs> oh no. Please, please just go where I want you to go. I, I'll do anything. Bonjour! <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna loot every single one of these guys because I do need the medicine. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the the one thing that was sort of interesting and was motivated by the animus is you have this moment sort of between uh, whatever the assassin character is, usually Ezio, um, and the and the target. And there's sort of this, I think they were really best when they would give sort of justifications for who they were. Uh, I really like the one where the guy basically says, is like, you know, I didn't do it for belief, I did it for the money um, in Assassin's Creed um, 3. Um, sort of the speech where he says, you know, your hands will always be empty. Oh, no. Hopefully they don't ding the bell. Good. So that that sort of stuff I liked a lot. Um, those were good little character moments. Um, but it is sort of interesting, so like, when you have these set- So I really like this idea of like, setting up the assassination mission. Like, this idea of... It's almost like a heist movie, and it's like, you know, here's... Here's the area, here's what's in play, and you can find whatever way... You know, however you want to try and accomplish this thing is up to you. I really don't want to have to use a blade on this. Um, so, with that in mind, like, to remove the... Oh, 
Oh no, who can see me? Damn it. I like that finisher. Um, yeah, as long as it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I should be okay. Um, but yeah, so what's sort of interesting here is they've removed this sort of character's justification for who they are, which in one sense, there is a little bit of a loss there because I, I have rather enjoyed the idea that, um, you know, I, I, I do think the games are better when the Templars are not t treated as sort of these mustache twirling villains. Uh, and instead are a sort of a defensible, um, if not, you know, admirable. I'm, I'm assuming people don't want, like, they don't grow up wanting to be a Templar in these things. Um, I'm getting a little, little too much lag to be that close to the target, I think. But, you know, I, I do like it when... Um, when the game takes an opportunity to say, it's like, you know, these are not just, like, these people are not just, um, they're not just here to inconvenience you. Like, there is a reason why they are behaving the way that they do. And, I don't know, I always, I always found that really rewarding. Um, I think I have a way I'm going to do this. Oh, no. That really was one that screwed me from a sudden frame drop. Get out of there. Um, I don't find them very helpful. In fact, most of the time they don't actually work when I hit the F button. <laughs> but I was able to... I was able to run away. Ow. I'll take whatever win I can at this point. <laughs> I got a clear way out. Jesus. Stop that! Um, but yeah, in this case, instead of, um, instead of getting sort of a moment of... Um, instead of getting like a moment with the, the individual so that they can, uh, they can justify their actions to you, what you get instead is sort of the revelation of what they did. Um, and so what they do is they reduce a bunch of Remember sort of you, detective Marie. moments. Like, so mm -hmm. instead of discovering all this stuff and doing an interrogation and that, they just condense it into this, you know, you accomplish the mission and this is the information that you were given. Um, I think it works. I think it works. Um, as, a, as a storytelling device. speaks to me. No, it's mine, De La Serre. De La Milady, you have a caller. I need your help, Marie. You were right. King Louis's been talking to Oh, that's interesting, but they didn't bring it back for Syndicate. Plotting against the revolution out of one side of his mouth, while he promises to support the Constitution out the other. Good. I trust you can get this information into the proper hands, Monsieur Le Pelletier. Of course, Grand Master. With this evidence in hand, the King's conviction is certain. Don't mind me, ladies. Oh. Glitch in the Matrix. Maybe? Oh. 
I don't know if it's supposed to be a tear that I'm going through or... Okay, not exactly what I wanted to do, but we should still be able to get... Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Just did. It's just telling me escape the area, but apparently there's some po something I'm supposed to be getting out of this. Okay, I actually got Syndicate with my uh, video card, so, um, but I haven't played it that much. Maybe it's just telling me how to get out of the building, which is mildly disappointing if it is. Although I suppose I can try and find, uh... oh, hi guys. I'm genuinely curious about these um, these other objectives, though. So, um, but yeah, so uh, I really like the look of Syndicate, um, and it's obviously like an it's an interesting um, it's an interesting period to to choose. Obviously, the Industrial Revolution is um, is something that I think so it's kind of interesting that the the more you go down that path the more you potentially run into situations where it's like okay like why aren't guns being used more often um obviously the closer that you get to that time or obviously the closer you get to the modern the modern age it's a little bit harder to justify um the hand-to-hand -hand combat which is obviously such a big part of the Assassin's Creed games um, but what's always been interesting, in my opinion, is how they've been able to credibly bring it about. So, like, for Assassin's Creed 3, like, if anything, the muscle muskets are a little too hokey. Um, like, obviously, nobody could fire a musket as many times as Connor does. Um, but on the other hand, like, no game has ever been improved by the words, you know, make it more realistic. Um... Like I have a feeling that if I was ever responsible for designing a game, there are a lot of there are a lot of reasons why it would not be good. But one of the biggest ones would be my insistence on like studying the subject and turning it into a simulation rather than sort of abstracting the things that are interesting about that. Okay, well, I I angered a bunch of people, but apparently there was no benefit to me actually like doing all of that. <laughs> But I did get a legendary phantom hood, so I feel good. Oop, and I get to bully some people. Yeah, well, and that's that's just it. Like, I actually think so. Um, they they do a good job of. So they do two things, which is, I think they do a good job of incorporating weapon... They, they do a good job of incorporating ranged weapons as something enemies can use against you. And they don't, um, they don't do this artificial, like, you know, for some reason Connor can't pick up guns. 
Um, so I actually thought one of the better things that they added, and I wish that they kept it in Origins, was like there would be the the British guards, and they would like they'd line up to fire at you, and you could like grab one of their comrades, and they would absorb the shots. And I, I always thought that led to just these great moments of like split second decision making, which had like a really cool look and payoff. And just I, I wish I could do that more because I keep feeling like you have to bounce or you have to look like a Dark Souls character rolling around when the firing at you button comes up. And I don't always feel it. I accomplish like, I don't feel like I accomplish my goal that often. Okay. So I feel like I should just be able to jump between these two things. Otherwise, how am I supposed to get the cockade? And the answer is, I can't. Okay. There we go. I think I understand that mechanic now. But yeah, so um, in the case of Assassin's Creed 3, you know, muskets are... The, the reason why they are ever going to be... The reason why they're ever going to be, you know, dangerous against you is because there's multiple people who can potentially use them. Um, you, you don't have to worry about, like, putting the thing on full auto and taking down, like, large groups of, you know, of redcoats or something like that. It's not Rambo. Um, so in this case, you know, they, they introduce a mechanic that mitigates the danger of a musket. Um, but they also introduce your ability to use it but it's a lot more efficient for you to use your super cool assassin power. So like the game, like you, I don't feel, at least I didn't feel like in Assassin's Creed 3, like I wanted to use a gun because it was just a slow and inefficient way of accomplishing what I wanted, where, you know, I can take out two guys at once with my blades. Um, And obviously, the closer you get to the modern age, the less you can sort of defend that kind of a decision. Um, you know, there's a reason why everybody who needs to, you know, be a guard or something like that carries a gun. It was a cool mechanic. You don't think it would work well considering that enemies use bows and you have a shield. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't mean that for Origins. Um, I, I actually don't have any opinions about Origins because I haven't played it. But, like, I was thinking for uh, Unity. Like, I feel like including the ability to do what you could do in Assassin's Creed 3 in Unity would allow for, um, I feel like it would allow for some, some mitigation of the ranged weapons, because they're not very fun to deal with, and they're, I feel like it's, it's hard to deal with them reliably. Anyway, with Merlis Levesque dead, it's time to rendezvous with Elise and get out of the area. What? No time to explain! Run! <laughs> Will we be taking a ride this evening, Professor? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm afraid not. These older models are entirely at the mercy of the breeze, and there is far too much of it, I'm afraid, to be safe. Now, this particular example... What do you think you're doing? Get out of there this instant! Cut the ropes! I'll cover you! Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, the game really wants me to cut the rope. Cut it! Cut it, you son of a bitch! So, like, here, to be able to grab... To, to be able to grab the guy when I'm surrounded... Um, 
and take take him out. I mean, the challenge here, of course, is that we're running... So think about the way that this was set up, right? Like, we're running away from the guys, I go to cut, and then I turn around and I'm like, ah, you know what, I'll just kick their ass instead. <laughs> It's like, obviously here I'm taking the time to to kill these guys where it should be an escape. Oh, come on, game. You're killing me here. Am I supposed to be chasing her this way? I can handle them. You keep running. Jesus. Got that, thank you. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? They're going to include a, okay, you know what, you're taking too long to get this thing done, so we'll just stop it. <laughs> Maybe they could just, like, not make it so... Ugh, I don't know, I didn't like that. Oh no! Are you alright? supposed to be doing at this point. Yeah, I... Next time, I plan the escape route. It's beautiful. From up here, you'd never know the nation is tearing itself apart. Can... 
Can things ever go back to the way they were before, do you think? Do you? After everything that's happened. Everything we've lost. So that's it then. The course of history forever altered. Never again to return. Maybe we can't go back. But going forward isn't necessarily an ending. Elise, I... You cheated. You took too long. I love you. So like I actually quite like that um I quite like that little sequence, but I feel like everything that led up to it really bounced off me. I don't know if you're supposed to spend so much time like running around on the rooftops, but I just felt like the gang the game was nagging me for something that it wasn't um it wasn't really allowing me to do. <laughs> I also think I need to get the mask off because Arno looks a little less expressive. Had to dash. You looked so peaceful. I didn't want to wake you. Je t'aime, Elise. Someone will come and collect it. Surely. Initiate. Do you read me? I'm sorry about all this noise. There's a waterfall of signal distortion. It's not looking good. How about one more boost before I lose this connection? Sending you the data now. Your new assassin abilities have been locked in your skills menu. Improve Phantom Blade, Thickest Skin, Poison Gas, Master Locksmith, Ground Execution, and Iron Skin. So definitely going for lockpicks. And there's nothing else I can buy right now. Montgolfier Flight. Yeah, no problem, Paint Bucket. I'm sorry I didn't respond to your uh, your battlefield segment. I was um, I was definitely uh, trying not to not to blow it too much. Obviously, uh, it's a little bit of a lower a lower ebb. We have actually lost a couple of people following, um, but um, that's fine. I know Assassin's Creed isn't for everyone. I'm not doing a great job of it tonight, but um, there are some friendly faces inside of chat right now uh, who I'm always very fond to see. So um, lurking, that is, and I, I appreciate that, guys, but I'll do my best to, um, to pick it up a little bit. But have a great one, uh, Paint Bucket. I will probably be casting on Monday next for more Stellaris, but of course you never know what the future holds. I am actually also going to be doing a couple more VOD things coming up soon, but I will, I'll announce those when I can actually deliver. Um, but thank you for your, your wishes. Right, uh, Mongol Flight. Science was the subject of speculation and intense debate at the end of the 18th century. The public were invited to various experiments to attest to scientific advances. Balloons were a firm favorite of the masses, and in the 1780s, and in particular on July 11th, 1784, the Montgolfier brothers were among the first men to launch manned descents uh, in hot air balloons. Brothers Joseph and Etienne constructed an experiment in Paris under the patronage of the French Academy of Sciences. On the 9th of September, 1783, a balloon was flown with the first living beings, a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. Sounds like the beginning of a great joke. A sheep, a duck, and a rooster all get in a big balloon and float away. <laughs> what happened next? I don't know. They were li literally never seen again. That same year, Paris, Jean-Francois uh, Platt, uh, de Rosé, and Marquis d'Arlon would be the first humans to lift off in a balloon. The crowd of curious onlookers gathered to witness the scene. You're close to the goal, okay? So hold fast. Our own research couldn't locate the date and place of Germain's death. So you'll have to find it yourself. Bishop out. Oh, damn it. Don't shove him. Tackle him. Uh. 
I don't even really give the money back. I just kind of tackle the guy and move on. All right, let's see. So there's a side of me that says I can like pick up some chests and all of that along the way, but I usually keep that on my own. So let's see if we can find anything. Uh, let's see if we can find the next mission. I should probably also be renovating these social clubs so I can actually make more income and afford all those fancy outfits. I must be missing something very obvious. One other thing I have observed, so we're obviously not at the end of the game yet, but if you notice all of these districts that I haven't visited yet, um, it sort of feels like the story hasn't given me a reason to go over the map. Like, unless I, st unless I start seeking out these areas, I don't seem to have a reason to, uh, to be in there to do the side missions. But then I don't know if there's any point in seeking out those side missions other than saying, I want to go do that now. Oh, here we go. Um, but I might, I might just be playing it wrong. Like, I don't know if... I don't know if people are expected to just go in and and tear through the main uh, the main mission. I was sort of hoping to have some more stuff to talk about the uh, French Revolution with, but I don't. At this point, I've kind of I don't have the best I can say. So. There is really no shortage of things to talk about for the French Revolution. So, for instance, the stream title here is a book by Edmund Burke, a uh, reasonably famous um, uh, kind of British conservative philosopher, uh, or not, sorry, not philosopher, of uh, conservative politician. Um, and it was sort of this cautionary... Um, is sort of this cautionary um, account of, you know, why why it was not a good thing, why these ideals of of you know liberty and uh, fraternity, equality, um, legality, we we'll call it. Um, ah, Celestine, there you are. I wonder if I might. Have I'm not sure if 436 is really worth the trip. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, it was it was sort of this very critical view, which obviously, you know, turned turned out to be a fairly good call. Um, and then to give you an idea of sort of the lasting effect, the um, so it wasn't actually the French Communist Party. I don't know what um, I'm probably going to pronounce his name incorrectly, but Mélenchon, um, the French the French politician, definitely heavily left. Um, I think he had like this thing where he he like had a hologram of himself that appeared in multiple locations during the the last French election. Um, but anyways, that particular so the party that he was representing and he himself were very critical of the game. Now, to their credit, they were actually fairly so they they were at least conscious enough of the appeal of these things um to say you know if you know if you just want to play the game for fun go ahead um like they they didn't i don't think they wanted or whether or not they wanted to like i think um they correctly identified that the audience would not be receptive to them um to sort of turning around and saying is like you're not allowed to play the video game you want because it disagrees with her politics um, but their criticism of this was that it uh, that the French Revolution was essentially a you know an absolutely good thing that Robespierre was mostly a, a good person who um, has been sort of vilified in history by counter-revolutionaries uh, and that, you know, a game like this is just simply repeating a series of, you know, of, of misleading, it's basically a misleading account of the French Revolution intended to 
sort of suppress the ongoing project of modern, um, sort of more modern progressive uh, political movements. I don't share that view, by the way, although I am really interested in the different takes on, um, on Robespierre, because certainly I've always sort of seen him, I've actually always understood him as being someone who was... He was a very effective politician, but he was apparently rather dull with the crowd. And so once things turned against him, he was not really able to, um... He wasn't really able to, um, to sort of turn the... So, like, I guess the biggest thing is that the Reign of Terror, um, is a, is a hard one to reconcile. Um, so in some cases you sort of see like a little bit of a, a comeuppance of, uh, of him being uh, caught up in this machine that he had uh, created. Um, but I am definitely interested, so, you know, if, if there's another side to this story, it's actually one that I'd sort of like to hear. Um, and so in that sense, obviously, you know, the complaint, so the complaint about um, unity was something that sort of brought my attention to um, well, I mean, I, I started looking in other places too, um, and it sort of, there seemed to be a couple of scholarly articles that wanted to reevaluate, um, Robespierre's place in, um, in history. So I, I just generally, I kind of found that sort of interesting. Um... And I mean, I actually think, so in terms of the message, what um, Mélenchon offered was um, a fairly good one, which is, you know, in, enjoy the entertainment product, but think for yourself. Um, and my hope and sort of my conviction uh, for games like Assassin's Creed has always been that um, they should show you little bits of history that maybe you didn't, you know, you never knew about before and that it becomes interesting enough that you are motivated to seek out you know to seek out the rest of the the story and um you know so i mean again like a perfect example you know the um the assassin's creed uh the Ezio assassin's creed games you know to um brotherhood revelations um that's a really interesting period of history it's one i'm kind of familiar with on my own. Oop, assassin silhouette, interact with the assassin the silhouette to join. No, oh, no, I'm I'm good. Thank you. We can't do this without you. Um, I will see if I can get myself some fancy outfits though. Let's see if we can go for a better hat. So the master master musketeer will clean me out, but I will admit I don't actually really like covering up the main character's eyes, especially for the cutscenes. I feel especially when you have a romantic scene to to cover up Arno is is maybe maybe not the done thing. Um, I'm broke, but they they work. But yeah, so to now, I mean, obviously, so I know less about Constantinople than I do. Um, Italy, particularly Florence. Um, but um, I don't know. I sort like personally. I kind of hope that people who play the Assassin's Creed two games would be interested enough in figures like Machiavelli to understand who they were and the time that they lived in and some of the ideas that they expressed. Not that I want you know everybody to you know read the prince and say you know this is exactly the way every everyone should run. I think the thing that's so interesting about the prince, is, well, there's a lot of things that are interesting about the prince, um, but if anything, it's just really interesting to see such an analysis of a political system that I am convinced Machiavelli did not think was the best um, 
Okay, so I just spent all my money and now I'm going to try and upgrade the social club. Let's see what happens. Thousand, okay. I can... I think probably just fulfilling a mission will be sufficient. Um, the question is, do I want to do... Is this a co-op? Companion mission? Price is right. decision to make now. Do I go for the criminals or do I go for the target? Damn it. Okay, well, that got me my, uh, that got me my cafe, so... Yeah, so um, where I was trying to say, like, in terms of active things for me to say about the French Revolution, like, I sort of feel like the best way to handle it is to sort of talk more about um, things that come up. So, like, obviously the game is moving towards the death of Louis the Sixteenth. Okay, apparently they want to pick a fight. Um... I don't really have a lot to say about that. Uh, yes, I do want to renovate the cafe. Ah, Saira. According to legend, Saira was inspired by Benjamin Franklin during his stint as ambassador to France. When asked about the American War of Independence, he would reportedly reply, Ah, Sira, Sira. Ah, it'll be fine. The music existed before the lyrics and was played upon harpsichord by Marie Antoinette, who is particularly fond of this tune. On special occasions at Versailles, uh, sorry, on special occasions at Versailles, the initial words uh, were quite harmless, basically a refrain on it will be fine over and over. But in 1790, they were changed. Ah, sira, sira, sira. Le aristocrat à la, à la lantern. Uh, ah, sira, sira, sira. Le aristocrat on le pendre. Uh, ah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. The aristocrats to the lamppost. Ah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. The aristocrats will hang them. The, thong, the song thus became a rallying cry of the Parisian Saint-Cloud and the revolutionary riots. I'll not do the whole, the whole song, though. But yeah, it's, I mean, it is rewarding to play games like um, Assassin's Creed on stream just because there is an opportunity to sort of talk about important bits of history. And I know last year when we did Assassin's Creed 3, it was really rewarding to be able to talk about a few aspects that maybe are not as well known about the the American Revolution and how it uh, some of it fed into into the revolution that we're seeing in this game. So, the Louvre could be referred to in the plural since there have been in fact several Louvre palaces since Philippe Auguste inaugurated it as a fortress. 
Each new regime sought to leave its own particular mark on the edifice, starting with Charles V, the Wise. The Wise? I think that's the nickname I'd go for. Better than called the Fat, or some uh, the other one who wanted to be known as the Severe. Two, worst, two of the worst nicknames in history. France's monarchs never ceased to embellish and improve Levois, in which, uh, which in Old Saxon means fortified camp, which would become Louvre. Uh, so this barbarian Gurbi, or Shack, became the largest palace in the world. Expanded and improved by Francis I, who had several sobriquets, including Francis of the Large Nose, as well as by Henry II and later Louis XIV. Okay, of the Large Nose. We have a new worst nickname. Hi, they call me King of the Large Nose. Well, be still my beating heart. Incidentally, um, Publius Ovidius Naso, also known as Ovid, or Ovid, um, apparently uh, Naso, um was in reference to the nose, although it's not clear, I don't know if he had like a Cyrano... Um, knows, or, or if that was supposed to mean something else. Despite its impressive stature, the palace was snubbed by France's kings, who, starting with Louis XIII, preferred Versailles. The courtyard, known as the Pavillon de, uh, sorry, Pavillon de Soleil, is overseen by a large clock. Louis XVI was the last monarch to use the palace as a household. Um, we'll see if the box is up high. If it's inside, then there's no point getting it. In getting it. it. Sounds like it's up here though. It is. I am slightly less poor. All right, a dinner engagement. Louis-Michel Le Pletier, a deputy of the National Convention, is part of Germain's plot. Find out what he knows and kill him. You can just give me a second here. I need to sneeze. Um. Not particularly, no. But the Marquis is on the National Convention for Le Peltier. He might have some insight. Ah, but which is a more incisive commentary on corruption in the bishopric? Seven nuns seducing a parish priest into debauchery, or an enormously endowed Benedictine sodomizing a goat named Pius? No force in heaven or on earth will make me answer that question. <laughs> Quite right, oh no. The goat it is. So, what can I do for you? And your charming companion. Louis-Michel Le Pelletier. What can you tell us about him? Ah, dear Louis. He went from abolishing the death penalty to calling for the king's head in two short years. Where can we find him? I'm afraid I don't often socialize with my fellow deputies. Something about my distaste for the beheading of the innocent. Speaking of innocence... De Sad. Mm -hmm. Le Peltier. Well, I believe he often takes meals at a certain cafe near the Palais Royal. I believe you can find him there. If we don't... I'll be back. Really? Well, then I hope I'm mistaken. No, you don't. Uh, I know I mentioned this before, but if you guys have not seen, uh, it's a, little, a bit of an older film. It's, I think, 2000s, uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Jeffrey Rush. For the palace. Make it round back. Make sure you clean those windows properly this time, or Mr. Le Pelletier will have my yes, head. Madame. Bonjour, Citizen Le Pelletier. Citizen Talia. Assassinate Le Petit. Uh, 
one unique kill, 69 guards, 14 entrances, and 17 hiding spots. Okay. I'll still screw it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the film is called Quills. It's by, I think it might have been a Fox Searchlight movie now that I think about it. Um, and it's, uh, it's based on a play by, I want to say Patrick Marber, but I think Marber did Closer. And let me take a second and find it. I won't spend too much time on this, but I'm pretty sure the playwright um, adapted the... Oh yes, and it's directed by Philip Kaufman, who did uh, The Unbearable Lightness of Being, which I really liked. And I think he co-wrote the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, anyway, Quills. Um, And yes, so uh, it was by, I, I was uh, wrong on the author. So it was Doug Wright who both wrote the screenplay and the, uh, and the film. Um, so it's uh, Jeffrey Rush, Kate Winslet, Joaquin Phoenix, and Michael Caine. And it's one, um, I kind of like bringing it up. So one, it's obviously sort of topical for Unity, but especially because there have been a lot of conversations recently about censorship or, you know, whether or not there are speech or creative works that shouldn't be out there. And I think in some cases, um, the issue has been mixed in with other issues. Um, I, I sometimes think that sometimes the the censorship question or the free speech issue um, has been brought in in a, in a situation where it doesn't need to be. Um, you know, I'll give a good example here, like the James Damore thing, the memo that he wrote. Um, I think you can actually you, you can and you should navigate that as something other than a free speech issue. So if you so the reason that I think Google gave, which was, you know, we didn't like what he wrote. I'm not so sure I like that idea of, of being a reason why somebody should be fired. Um, but if you turn around and say James Damore is a um, he's an engineer and he decided to do a freelance you know, HR document, which was incredibly disruptive in the workplace and he lost Google money. Um, you know, that seems, at least by the standards of employment in the United States, a perfectly legitimate reason to sack him. And that has nothing to do with, the, you know, nothing to do with the quality of his thought uh, or his, um, you know, his beliefs for, uh, you know, whether or not he should have, have those beliefs. He's, of course, entitled to his beliefs. Um... So, and incidentally, I also think it's different from the one that came up today, which was the conduct of the writer and ArenaNet's shocking and disgraceful choice to not just fire her, but fire the coworker that actually stood up for her in a very mild way. Um, I actually think, so there's, the, the funny thing about this is I don't necessarily think there's a good guy on either side of this. Um, I think she could have expressed herself better. But the problem is, is that when a company decides to, you know, choose the nuclear option, and on top of that, they, you know, they basically come out and say, yeah, specifically because of this Reddit mob, that's why we did this. Um, suddenly it makes the actions of the, of the writer <laughs> not really the topic for discussion. Um, but anyways, that's a little a little off offside. Um, the uh, the reason why I like bringing up quills is that um, it it does it's a pretty decent film in terms of dealing with the question of sort of obscene works and it has a little bit to say about creativity and and whatnot. I think Jeff, I mean everybody in the film does a really good job. I, I Particularly like uh, Jeffrey Rush and and, um, and Joaquin Phoenix in it. So if you've not seen it, it's definitely one worth checking out. 
Louis Michel Le Petit uh, Saint Fago was born on May 29th, 1760, in Paris. Very promising. He became a councillor of the Paris Parliament. Before the Revolution, parliaments were judicial institutions that had no legislative function. In 1779, being under the age limit, he was admitted with special permission, most probably because of Templar intercession. Among other law-related activities, he climbed the ladder of that institution until 1789 when he was elected to the Estates General as a representative of the nobility. Pretty soon he discarded his noble origins and supported the cause of the Third Estate. He then devoted himself to politics, even becoming... oops. Sorry, this is a problem that I have with my mouse. Uh, even becoming, uh, for almost two weeks, president of the National Constituent Assembly in June 1790. Being a lawyer, he chose uh, he took part in the writing of a draft of a criminal code, which was the most of which the most striking point is the abolition of the death penalty. But this idea is dismissed. Dismissed. Talk about the uh, talk of the abolition of the death penalty, eh? In the 18th century? Never mind, America. You'll catch up one day. Okay, and I have. Apparently, I can't talk to these guys. So it doesn't give me the infiltration opportunity. Nothing right, to see here, friends. I am slightly curious if I'm able to double assassinate in the crowd. That was really cool. The Palais Royal. The Palais Royal was the nerve center of the revolution under the auspices of its owner, Philip, Duke of Orleans, cousin of Louis the Sixteenth. Finding himself in debt, Philip Dolin uh, lined three arcades with sixty shops, which he let out to restore his finances. The galleries were bustling until two in the morning. It was a non-stop party, and the meeting place for the capital's many crooks, swindlers, old lechers, and young debauched. Paris really hasn't changed a bit. An unusual timepiece was installed, a small cannon that fired exactly at noon, triggered by the sun itself. Its regal name was impossible to maintain under the revolution, so it became the Palais Egalité. Oh, never mind. Damn it. Where'd the crowd go? Oh god. So that's mostly because I got greedy trying to loot the bodies. Kind of hoping to be able to. Kind of hoping to be able to take out those guys, uh, or the bell before those guys, but that's clearly not going to work, so. I will. Move quick! Apparently, he hasn't noticed that his friend has been spiked on the wall, but. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Still worked. And I'm assuming there's probably going to be something awful behind that door, but I will do my best. I actually kind of like the fact that once you get 
a high enough skill in locks, the most difficult locks are still hard to unlock. So the idea on this one, if you've not seen them, if you try to unlock a lock that is higher skill than what you currently have, the um, don't mind me. Um, what happens is the the sort of target becomes very narrow and the moving part becomes very rapid um, or bounces back rapidly. So, and then of course, now I'm at level three and I've got this one here. So you can see it's, it's slow moving. It's got a massive target. So if I fail this one, then I'm going to be really sad. Um, so I kind of like the fact that, you know, relatively... Dif so, like, difficult locks remain difficult, they're just not as. I wonder if I can get away with this nonsense. Probably not. So there's something on the ground that I need to check out, but I mostly want to go to that white exclamation mark. Poison assassination. Okay. Trying to poison my customers. Sorry, sir. Ought to call the gendarme. I'll have it taken away soon. Returns. Poison. What do you think? What's next? Infected bread. Forgive me. Nope. You see me? Gotta <laughs> okay. be careful about that. Yes. Good. Damn it. That was supposed to be the kill on that guy. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's the thing I don't like about the pistols is that if you're performing uh, if you're performing an action action that locks you into an animation, um, it's a guaranteed hit, and pistols hit pretty hard. Um, so this is like again, it's worth remembering all that. Uh, I kind of wanted to jump into the... Okay, well, still let me do it. So, um... Obviously, I'm not aware of the constraints that led them to make certain decisions about features that got included in uh, Unity that weren't in, or that were present in um, Assassin's Creed 3. Um, but I feel like because a thing I'm experiencing fairly commonly is that the way the I 
feel like the way that the pistol works and the fact that it's unavoidable mid-animation, I feel like restoring the the ability to trigger it when a... Um, like, so if a guy's got you in the sights and you're in the middle of an animation, to be able to hit a button and to be able to convert it from a kill, but instead... So, like, basically, the idea here is you've got someone in your power. I'm probably not going to be able to stay in here. Yeah. Uh, this will not end well. Yeah, so basically you already have someone in your power, so to be able to to be able to turn that into a um, you know, into a defensive move, um, I kind of feel would be a little more consistent with the way that Assassin's Creed has sort of handled stuff like that in the past. I'm tempted to just throw it. I mean, I was running in kind of recklessly. Uh, I really wanted to trigger the tainted wine um, dialogue, but Uh, so what I'm going to do on this one, I think I'll probably take I'll take the same route. Um, at least this time I didn't uh, I didn't get noticed by the guard by the haystack, so I should just be able to pop him off and um, disable the bell. And then I just want to be careful that I don't get detected. Oh damn it! Yeah, well, that's not going to end well for me. Ah, oh, damn it. You know what? Yeah, at this point, anytime there's a big gang of people coming after me, I think I'm just gonna reset it. I must have... Uh... I must have come from some weird angle or something like that. I'm sorry, I know this isn't uh this isn't exactly the the most dynamic cast. I wanted to make sure that I got one in, but I have a feeling I'm <laughs> not being very entertaining tonight. I've said that a couple of times about Assassin's Creed Unity, but I, I really do want to get to the end. That was a little bit better because it seems that the guy didn't uh, didn't notice me at all. It might have been smarter for me to try and uh, check out those bodies just because I know I don't have full medicine. But seeing as I've sort of said I'm not going to I'm not going to commit to. Um, a good opportunity. Get in. Okay. Cool it for a little bit. Customers. I'm sorry, sir. 
Gonna wait for this guy to turn around. Ought to call the gendarme. Come in. Well, I'll be taken away as soon as the cart returns. Poisoned wine. What's next? Infected bread. Okay. So. These guys stay close enough. I might be able to get my other double assassin, but I know everybody's going to clear out pretty quickly after that. I don't think it's worth it. Hey, Ruby Red Blaze. Thank you very much for stopping by with the bits. Uh, let me just take a quick second here to get out of a danger area. Um, these little lag spikes you're experiencing, it's silky smooth on my... Oh no. Um, silky smooth on the monitor, uh, as long as you can get past the um, sort of the black blinking flickers. But um, it definitely, uh, it definitely, it basically it's the inability of the, um, it's the inability of the of OBS to encode fast enough. That's usually with um, Unity demanding a few too many resources from the CPU. So let me just catch up. Well, Rubies has appeared to watch you stab folks. Thank you very much for for that. Um, I'm not doing a great job of the game tonight, but I do appreciate having someone to chat with. So, are you a fan of um, Unity? Pardon, mademoiselle. Monsieur Le Pelletier has complained of stuffiness in his office. Could you open the window? What are you on about? Monsieur hates a drafty room. I understand. Bonne soirée. Okay, so it's really interesting that they chose to... <laughs> oh, I always pay attention to chat. I just don't have too much... Uh, just don't have too much activity going on at the moment, so not much to respond to. I'm actually finding... So I don't think the game quite has its... Um, yeah, so I'm I'm kind of in the same... Uh, I'm in the same boat as you on Unity, um, which is... I personally find the controls a little unresponsive, and that has marred the experience more than I think it should. Um, surely this isn't the window washer again. Um, so that's probably my biggest... That's probably my biggest gripe. Um... The other thing, story-wise... Oh, um... Syndicate? I haven't played that yet, but I do own it. I got it with my video card, so I do plan on doing that in the future. Um, now, I haven't experienced too many of the bugs. The only bug that I have is the one that's actually causing me some of my, um, my streaming problems. It's telling me I can do a poison assassination, but it is not at all clear how I'm supposed to accomplish it. I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with the washer, and I used up all my money, but I'll, uh... Oh boy. I'll get this sorted out. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just find where I can get that chest. Um, the other thing... Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you very much for the 48 bits, making a total of 49. Um, the, um, yeah, so the other thing that hasn't quite worked for me on this title, <laughs> I didn't actually know what the, uh, the equivalents were, but I, I do appreciate the activity. Um, I've, I've since sort of learned to be able to cast without, um, I've sort of learned without I have learned to... Jesus. Mind you don't leave it open. Monsieur Le Pelletier hates the draft. <laughs> 51. Uh, I believe that brings you to a full 100 bits. That window better be sparkling when Mr. 
Oh, so it won't let me in. Interesting. Okay. So I do need to find the money. Um, anyways, yeah. So the the I need to actually finish a sentence. You've given me a dollar. Thank you. Um, Monsieur Le Pelletier complained of streaks last week. See oh, dear. Come back here. I'll turn you into horse and um, but yeah, so the bug that I'm facing right now is uh, I'm playing this on a 16 by 10 monitor, which means that if I want to stream it, I need to get it to 16 by 9. That's only available in windowed mode. If you play windowed mode um, with VSync, there is this basically horrifying and unresolvable black flickering that happens on the monitor. Uh, if you don't turn on VSync, then the game takes up all available resources, kind of like what you're seeing right now. And uh, OBS cannot encode anything. In fact, I'm going to do my best to try and... Oh, this guy's probably going to sound the alarm. Um, I'm just going to get up while this gets resolved. Um... But yeah, so the best solution for me is actually playing the game full screen um, because that still allows me to turn on... That still allows me to play the game um, with VSync on, but it doesn't have the flickering problem. Um, yeah, so I've got the exact same kind of... Uh, I've got the exact same kind of uh, monitor. I'm pretty sure it's 1680 by 1050. I don't know exactly how the ratio uh, ratio works out, but or maybe it's 10 1080 that I have. Although 1080 is the horizontal lines. Anyways, the the aspect ratio is 16 by 10, which means that uh, if I play full screen, then I wind up with a weird distortion on the screen, either for myself or for the stream, and usually both. So. All of this translates into a, you know, a nasty setup where I actually have to play the game off of my OBS screen and I still am not able to avoid these sudden stutters like what you're seeing right now. And I do my best to try and get out of areas that have, um, that have these issues, but um, it's one of the main reasons I'm really looking forward to playing Syndicate. It's because I believe that Syndicate resolved these issues. Um, all right. This guy's just too much trouble to be worth it. Maybe I can take some of his pocket money and get the... Get a little closer to 4,000 Leva. Or Franks. Um, one of the two. Syndicate's got a whole... Finding special ways into assassination points too, by the way. Um, yeah, actually, so that's one thing that I've sort of liked about Unity, is the idea of sort of plotting the assassination. But in this case, um... I don't seem to have I don't seem to have the resources available to do the cool assassination and I also don't seem to be able to find the target and this is getting desperate as far as quality is concerned. Let me just take a quick second here and go into my task manager and make sure there's nothing else running in the background. Sorry about this. Okay. Um ACU's taking up resources but I've still got like a quarter of my GPU and like it's not even using half the CPU. So what the hell is going on? Let me just take a look at my um, broadcast settings video. <sighs> um, interesting. Uh, won't be applied till the next time I... Okay. Yep, so there's nothing I can do in OBS to get it flick, fixed. Uh, your favorite one is the Jack the Ripper DLC where you go in as a prisoner and then bam, you've got a hit and play. Okay, I knew I knew there was a Jack the Ripper um, DLC, but I wasn't sure how they covered it. Like, obviously, you know, as far as Jack the Ripper stories are concerned, you've got Hitchcock's The Lodger and then you've got, you know, uh, Alan Moore's the comic, not the film, from hell, um, and there's clearly very different, there's very different perspectives on Jack the Ripper, all of them good, by the way, uh, although personally I kind of prefer from hell to the lodger, but... Okay. 
Um, the other game that I'm actually really looking forward to doing at some point is um, Assassin's Creed Rogue, um, which I believe is the lesser known sort of like younger brother of Unity. Um, and the main reason for that is because I, um, I'm really interested in the Seven Years' War. And of course, if you're interested in the Seven Years' War, then, or even if you're not interested in the Seven Years' War, um, it does have connections with the, um, with both the American and the French revolutions. And so it's a nice little prologue to both three and unity although it obviously obviously uh assassin's creed 3 predates rogue even using even using fist weapons which is the absolute best thing is this a syndicate you're talking about again i think at this point i'm just going to try and get inside the house I think one thing I'm going to try next time I do uh, Unity is um, lower the encoding settings. She breaks arms and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, um, I was wondering if they... Uh, so I... I used to live in Vancouver. There's this place called Academy Duello, and they taught uh, Bartutsu, which is made most famous by Sherlock Holmes. Um, okay, I have no idea what's going on. There we go. Wasn't exactly a parry, but it'll do the trick. <laughs> um... But yeah, I was slightly curious whether or not they adapted some of the Bartitsu techniques for... Okay, I'm assuming I lost some health here. I should probably get out of the open before I die. Let me out! This is embarrassing. I'm so sorry about the quality, uh, Ruby Red Rose. I'm not sure I have anything I can do to fix this in the, in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the shame is, like, I'm seeing just this absolute, like, um, I'm seeing this, like, um, dance party going on on my right-hand monitor as the thing's just strobing and like it's it's not breaking a sweat like it's down to i think the worst i've seen it is at like 59 which is where it just tries to you know to to sync up with the um the fractional uh refresh so basically it's running like normal but <laughs> looking looking at obs which actually has the the streaming you know you're getting these little spikes so um, but yeah, anyways, so I, I sort of wondered, because, like, of the fragments that I've seen of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, it looks like it, but I'm not quite sure, like, there's, like, the really famous thing about Bartitsu is the cane, um, or the umbrella sometimes, because in Vancouver people carry around a lot of umbrellas, um, and that, that's probably the most sort of stylish and recognizable part. I mean, the bare knuckle boxing is cool and all that too. But, um... So I'm assuming if I run in here, I'm going to get my ass kicked. Um... Alright, screw it. Death is the most reliable stealth.
Um, but yeah, so it's, um, you know, I know um, uh, it's not Connor. Connor's uh, uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Anyways, I don't see a lot of uh, cane fighting um, in, uh, in Syndicate, but it was something... Actually, so from my understanding, a lot of Bartitsu was practiced by uh, sort of women in sort of the suffrage movement. Um, and I don't know if it was used to sort of resist the people who'd kind of try and break up... Um, you know, break up labor movements and such, but, um, like, again, just this, this funny little artifact of an unexpected, um, like, so the, the funny story about it, the, the way people know about Bartitsu is from the final problem, or actually, no, maybe it's the return of Sherlock Holmes. Um, either way, so, um, Uh, Sherlock Holmes is tells Watson, you know, how did how were you able to overcome Moriarty? And it's like, well, I'm studied in the you know the art of baritsu, and people were looking for a while in terms of what this baritsu thing is, and they found they were able to sort of place a demonstration of, if not Barton Wright, one of his students. Barton Wright was the one who originated baritsu. He was fascinated with jujitsu, and sort of wanted to create his create his own thing. Um, oh, you've got, uh, Syndic's got weapons you can pick and choose. There's fist, cane, swords, and, uh, kuk, uh, kukiri? Kiri deal more lethality, cane, sword. Is that a, a weapon from East India? I should, really should read more about the time. Anyways, yeah, so um, they sort of, they were able to, to sort of trace a newspaper article with a place where they knew Arthur Conan Doyle was at the time, and they talked about Barton Wright's Bartitsu, and they figured that he misunderstood or, or misremembered um, the T, and that's, that's where it came from. But obviously now you've got a big selling point, right? It's fight like Sherlock Holmes, so you... It's like a knife, but with a curved bit. Okay. After her father's assassination, Louise Suzanne Nepetier was officially named Daughter of the Nation by the Grieving National Convention. That's a hell of an adoption right there. Sorry about your dad. Anyway, literally everyone in France is your parent now. Imagine the queue of people who've been, uh, had to pick her up at the school gates every day. Imagine all the cards she have to sign every bloody Mother's Day. In her later life, she was an ardent royalist and devoted, uh, devoted considerable time and expense to recovering and destroying the famous painting of her father, by the artist Jacques-Louis David. She died in 1829. Okay. Well, we're slouching onto Bethlehem here. We've got... Ah. We miss you. A bottle of your finest wine. Tonight we celebrate the death of Tyrion. Okay. Well, he just asked for a waiter. Ah. Perfect. So this stuff I like a lot. Actually, there was another point I was going to make about Assassin's Creed, but we'll watch this thing play out. Because I, I like stuff like this where you need to solve a little bit of a problem or a puzzle and watch the watch the plan work out. Yes, I've been looking into Krav Maga. I, I, I'm looking to do exercise, and I, I feel like learning a, a martial art would be a, would be a fun way of doing that. Let's see. I believe that's the one by the uh, the IDF, right? So I'm curious if I need to still deliver the coup de gras. Oh crap, come on, group of people. 
Oh, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? The king must be seen as a criminal and a traitor. Only then, when he's executed like a common villain, can we show the world Jacques de Molay's great truth. You may show the world what truths you like, Grandmaster. What I do, I do for the good of France. You were right. King Louis's been talking to all sorts he shouldn't have. Citizen Le Pelletier, the vote stands at 360 for execution to 360 for clemency. How do you vote? Execution! The vote is cast and counted, Grandmaster. And? The king will die. I had no doubt. I shall very much look forward to witnessing the end of tyranny. I'll see to it you have the finest view. Alright, let's see if I can get out of here. I'll fit you, turtle! Oh god, okay. Mark my words. Not exactly what I want to do, but uh, just, just move down, run away, do what you can. Like Bellic said, it's the Levantine method. Just run in and... Hi, guys! Damn it. Alright. I'm gonna try and turn this into a bit of a Benny Hill thing. Crap. Too late. Or too early. Damn it. Yeah, it's probably optimistic for me. I really wish it would have let me off the... There we go. I am not going to survive this. Oh my god, I hate this so much. Oh, that's bullshit. Okay. I, I will be able to catch up in just a minute as soon as I run back into the crowd. Okay. Thank God for that. I'm going to hang out for a little bit. Uh, a lot of the moves used are incredibly dangerous, uh, but it's designed to end fights as fast as possible. Yeah, so uh, we are on the same page. I, again, I, I sort of have these anecdotes, but I never know exactly what I'm talking about, and I don't like pretending that I do. Um, I did have a couple things I wanted to say about the uh, the story as well for this, but I can live without driving the brutes berserk. Okay, let's uh, let's read some database. Uh, a lot of the moves are incredibly dangerous designed. Uh, they don't avoid such things as causing possible death or severe injury to your opponent. Yeah, um, which is why. I'm, I mean, I'm actually very curious how they teach it in a civilian context because I'm not sure. It sort of raises the question, like, does someone need that that kind of information? Um, I'm certainly not. I'm, I'm more interested in just knowing what it's like rather than applications. But anyways... I'll get a couple of database things read, and then there was another thing I was going to say about the story of the game, which didn't... I'm I'm still trying to resolve it, but... Anyway, so the assassination of Louis-Michel uh, Le Peltier. Uh, noble by birth, Michel Le Peltier de saint Fargo was an ardent defender of the people's cause and symbolically, symbolically relinquished the titles of nobility. In June 1790, he became president of the National Assembly, and on the 20th of January 1793, he cast the deciding vote for the death of Louis XVI, but only after a great deal of hesitation. Well, I should think so. On the very evening of the vote, Le Pelletier was killed under mysterious circumstances at a cafe in the Palais Royal. Contemporary sources credit a former royal guardsman as the killer, but the, ex excuse me, the exact identity of the murderer remains mysterious to this day. All right. Now I would like... Oh. Lots of database entries, apparently, so... Um... 
Louis-Michel Le Pelletier de saint Fargo was born on May 29th, 1760 in Paris. Very promising. Oh, wait, we covered these, so. Um, at the convention, he nevertheless voted for the death of Louis XVI and was killed the very same evening. He also worked more covertly on a draft about education, which was read by Robespierre at the convention about six months after Le Pelletier's death. Le, Pelletier remains, Le Pelletier's remains went to the Pantheon, Assassin VI, Templar Zero, and his daughter was adopted by the nation as a token of his contribution to the revolution. Locations. Café Février in the Palais Royal. Among the 19 cafés that comprise the Palais Royal, the Café Février was located at 113 Galerie de Valois. The famous, it was famous for two events. Firstly, this is where Robespierre celebrated the proclamation of the Republic on September 21st, 1792. Secondly, it was here that on the January 20th, 1793, Michel Le Pelletier de saint Fargo was assassinated. And... Oh, Dearest uh, Arno, I can barely conceive how much has changed in the last three years. How far our roads have taken us. Sometimes I feared our paths would diverge forever. Or else come together at loggerheads like the star-crossed lovers in some hackneyed stage piece. Yet here we are. Not the same brash children we once were. Nor yet strangers. When this is over... When Germain is dead at our feet and my father rests, who then will we be? Assassin Mentor and Templar Grandmaster? The continuation of the old? Or the beginning of something new? Will we shape the future of our world? Or will we retire quietly to the countryside to raise goats? I can just see you, a goat herd, leaping and climbing about the Alps. No goat would have a chance of escaping you. <laughs> I do not know what the next days, months, years will bring. All I know is that we shall remain Arno and Elise. And with that, I am content. Je t'aime. Elise. I really do like uh, some of these... Um these little digressions with uh, Elise's letters. Uh, and you're saying uh, Krav Maga teaches pistol disarms, fighting opponents, using knives, sticks, bats, other techniques all designed for to be useful in real life situations. Yeah, actually, one of the main reasons why... Oh, I was only kidding. Um, one of the reasons why I was so interested in Bartitsu was the... Um, uh, it was actually the bare knuckle boxing element because I feel like there's no way I can really be all that arrogant if I get punched in the face, um, and it worked. <laughs> um, damn it! But uh, the pr I don't know the practicality of something like Bartetsu. Um, I'm not quite sure I can say it's. Uh, I can't, I'm definitely gonna, not going to rank it with Krav Maga. What little I know of it. Damn it. Jesus. Oops. Damn it. I was, wasn't paying attention. Um, so, one of the things I'll say about the story for this. Um, I've warmed to it quite a bit. I think the murder mystery angle is not a bad one. Yep, that was shameful. And I gotta buy some medicine. I'm actually, I'm probably close to wrapping up for tonight, but I'll, I'll kind of do a, a small debrief and we'll get a few side little things done, like buying, buying goods, unlocking chests and whatnot. Um, and I know I said this a little bit before, but um, one of the things that I wish this game took a better advantage of. So the French Revolution is just... Oops, I completely walked past the guy. Oh, but it still counts. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, please let me go through the window. I know it's not that hard. There we go. Um, so the French Revolution is a tremendous event. It's one that, you know, there's a reason there are so many books about it. It's, you know, Napoleon is one of Stanley Kubrick's most famous unrealized projects um i always like to say i like to give the example of immanuel kant the prussian philosopher who 
Apparently, you could set his, your watch by the time that he would walk by. He was that regular in his behavior, always reading the paper. And the only time that he missed his routine was at the outbreak of the French Revolution. And I kind of like to imagine that it's the only event that was so substantial that he... Um, that he sort of he he broke his his regular um, his regular patterns, um, and then of course I mean there's so many examples of um, I don't know the how this sort of this time period has captured the imagination. You've got Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, which is a really wonderful book if you haven't uh, if you haven't read it. Um, you've got Les Miserables. Les Mis Wait, hang on. Does Les Miserables cover the same time period as this? It might be... I have a feeling I might be a little bit off on the timing on that one. Um, but, I mean, then you also have... I mean, historical figures, people, you know, know Marie Antoinette. You've got, you know, everybody knows what a guillotine looks like. It's like one of the most iconic images of the French Revolution. It's something that people have a lot of images of, uh, even if they don't understand it particularly well. And I think the Assassin's Creed games uh, are at their best when they do two things, either when they inspire people to sort of check out history. Um, actually, these aren't mutually exclusive as, as well, but when they inspire people to check out the settings, I have no idea why I can't run through that. Um, So, you know, the same way that when I played Civilization, I, I sort of, you know, there's only so many times you can hear about what a hoplite is before you go and, and read about what that that is. Oh, this is where we met Napoleon. But something tells me I'm not going to be able to go down the stairs. I must be missing something here. Um, oh, no, I'm just... Not looking in the right places. But yeah, so it should be either history you find... Um, it's either history that you find interesting or history you weren't aware of and presents it in such an attractive way that you feel compelled to, to check it out on your own. And story-wise, where these things work best is there are these nice little gaps... Uh, in terms of, of what happened, or there is room for... Um, you know, there's room for the... Okay, actually, so a, a great example of this. Um, you've got uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Or, sorry, not the second. The second is the one that's currently on the throne. You've got Queen Elizabeth, a virgin queen. And you have this you know, giant Spanish armada that is on its way um, to take on England. And it's going to be, you know, the death of Protestantism. It's going to be the Spanish enforcing Catholic rule on on England. There's, there's nothing that's going to stop this thing. It's just, you know, it's a nightmare. It's, you know, it's the, you know, that part sort of two-thirds through the movie where everything's just going to hell and there's there's no way that it's ever going to get fixed. Or it seems like there's no way that it's ever going to get fixed. Uh, and then a... You know, uh, suddenly a big... I guess they call it the Protestant wind comes and just completely destroys the armada, um, leading... Um, I believe Elizabeth was the one to deliver the quip, you know, God is an Englishman. Um, now, what's neat about this is that you can get something like, like you, there's ways that you can put this into Assassin's Creed. Um, you know, the, so far as I can tell, the pieces of Eden, um, have some defined qualities, but not like, I don't believe that there is a, I don't think there's like a set, um, oh, damn it. I gotta pay attention to the other monitor when I do that. Um, 
Like, I don't think it has, I, I don't think they've ever established, like, a piece of Eden can't do this thing here. They are, you know, they're the MacGuffin. They're the letters of transit. It's, you know, strange object of, of great power that everybody wants. Um, so in this case, you can say, you know, if, if you were writing the screenplay of the world history and you said, you know, I really like the English, the English are the good guys in this story, uh, probably a highly contentious position depending on who you were in history, but there you have it. Um, you know, um, the Navy, Navy's on its way, you know, it's big, big scary, everyone, you know, English mothers tucking in their children, you know, um, hoping for the best and then the hurricane comes and, and blows. This wasn't actually a hurricane, but comes and blows away the, the the navy. I think pretty much any copy editor is going to look at that and say, "Come on, like, you know, no, nobody's really going to accept that in the plot." And yet, that is exactly what happens in history. You know, you're you're not allowed to write that, but apparently, you know, the author of of world events is is allowed to cheat that way. Wait, the thief the thief robbed the woman while she was in the middle of a sword fight? Ballsy. Have you ever considered just reading on stream? I actually used to do that. Um, there was a while when... Um, there was a while when... Um, when uh, Twitch didn't allow that, and so they actually banned the channel uh, for reading, which is why I haven't done it since. But I did a full reading of Ernst Gombrich's A uh, Little History of the World, which actually has I'll I'll maybe close the um I'll close the stream with that account of the French Revolution because I find it a really charming one. Oh that's well that's good to hear, Ruby Red Blaze. That's I, I really appreciate that feedback. Uh it's one that I, I've gotten before, but it makes me it makes me feel like I'm giving some added value because I kind of feel like my Assassin's Creed stream today could have could have been better, and part of that is due to the technical problems. Um, but if you are feeling a little sleepy and you and you need to go, I totally get it. I'll be wrapping up fairly soon anyway. Um, but uh, where was I going with this? Yeah, so um, you know, you can say you know Elizabeth is you know maybe with the help of the assassins, maybe just on her own finds a piece of Eden. I think they've actually shown an image of Elizabeth holding um, the royal orb and it is implied that it's a piece of Eden. And that's ultimately, you know, that's the real reason why the Protestant wind came and uh, and the, the Spanish navy was, was destroyed. Going to bed after finish reading up on that bit of history. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I, w I won't actually read. I don't have the Gombrich book in front of me. It's in a it's in a box, um, and I don't think I'd be able to find it in time. But I can give um, I can give the account. So uh, to close the thought on uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, the one thing that I think is missing here is that we are largely. I feel like in this game, the French Revolution is happening around us. And it's sort of like, oh, okay, apparently the king just got captured, and in a cutscene, we got to see sort of behind the scenes that he was uh, condemned to death. And I feel like there's a little bit more drama that you can get out of having... So, like, we know that, for instance, that the Templar... Like, one plot point I really like is that the Templars are deliberately manipulating the grain shipments in order to achieve a particular political end. I think that is good. Like, so in this case, you answer the French Revolution question of, you know, why is it when everybody is starving and, you know, the discontent is being driven by the starvation and you have different political groups getting control of the country, why were they not able to resolve the issues in that period of time? Why were they so ineffective at actually addressing the whole reason why they were going about on the revolution? And in this case, you have the answer in Assassin's Creed terms, which is the Templars made it that way. And, you know, world the world would have been totally different if, um, if, uh, if, that, uh, if that hadn't been true. Um, and I feel like this has been a little bit of a smaller story in the sense that, uh, oops, well, that's revenge for me uh, getting killed by the police officer. There we go, that's slightly more efficient. Um, 
So I kind of wish that this story leaned into the into the French Revolution a little bit more, um, rather than going um, and sort of just having like so again the Marquis de Sade is a character, but you don't really he's he's just a person from history that you encounter. Mirabeau is a person from history you encounter. It's not that you're I mean at least in his case like his his um, assassination is the the result of a fight between the the assassins of the Templars, but. I just sort of feel like history, it's really interesting when these games present a model of history as explained by the secret war that's being fought in the background. So uh, onto the bit of history that I was uh, was going to mention. Um, so Ernst Gombrich um, introduces the French Revolution um, in contrast to Louis the Sixteenth. Uh, sorry, Louis the Fourteenth. Um, so you've got the extremely capable governor, um, Louis XIV, the Sun King, Le Roi. Um, and, you know, he's the person who makes Versailles. He is the person who is so influential that he's essentially able to keep the... Um, he's able to keep the French nobility under his thumb, essentially through setting fashions and, and basically keeping everybody at Versailles um, you know, sleeping with each other's spouses and, you know, having court intrigues and such. And what's interesting is that many rulers really wanted to em emulate the splendor of Versailles. And Louis the Fourteenth was his, you know, huge wig. There's the idea of the levé, um, where various members of the nobility would, you know, one of them would hold his shirt and be able to put it on, and then another would, you know, present the wig or, or whatever. And all of this is a very elaborate system of control. And it was, Louis XIV was the, the one who said, l'état c'est moi, I am the state. And what he did was he took... He took France, which was not necessarily a monarchy in the way that he left it in so there was a king but the nobility would be able to sort of influence his his decisions they would have a certain degree of power and what louis the 14th completed was the centralization of power to the king um and and he did so through uh through versailles and again like even if you look at his letters um, you can see a very clear design where it's not that, you know, plenty of people in different courts around Europe wanted to do what Louis did, but they wanted to do it because it was just very fashionable. They didn't have the political genius that was behind those moves. And so if you think about this idea of trying to make things as complicated as possible for people and just generally creating a, a set of circumstances where people are, are too busy with their own kind of petty squabbles and, you know, again, if everything down to the fact that you have this massive periwig that you need to maintain in order to, um, you know, to keep fashionable in court, um, all of this is, is geared towards that end. But if you're somebody who is just concerned about the splendor, you know, the fine dining and the fashion and so on and so forth, um, you're going to start cutting corners. And the way that you can understand the beginning of the French Revolution and the circumstances that lead to it is to take a look at the wigs. Because when you go from Louis XIV to his massive mane of a wig, just look at paintings of him and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um... And then you contrast them to the French Revolution. What you see is the succession of smaller and smaller wigs until finally, uh, with Louis XVI, you have these little almost hats, like these little white powdered things that um, you, you know, you can basically just toss on almost like a cap. Um, and what this is a great little image, like if you were writing a book, this is exactly the kind of imagery you'd want to go for. Like you have all of the care and the time that goes into that. And the political calculation is stripped from the elaborate uh, procedure. And instead, this superficial focus on finery and, you know, France as is sometimes portrayed in the stereotypes. Um, and that's personified through the the white, you know, the white smaller wig. And so 
it's maybe not surprising that it's, of course, under Louis the Sixteenth, when there is uh, terrible fiscal mismanagement, uh, which again, fiscal crises, sort of being the trigger for uh, deeper political crises, and uh, ultimately leading into the, you know, the establishment of the French Republic. Um, so again, it's you know, it, it's I, I wouldn't like write a you know, I. A doctoral dissertation on the, you know, the causal effect of wigs in the French Revolution is probably not the smartest academic choice. Um, but I think it's a nice summary of this idea of Louis XIV going from centralizing power and giving rise to this powerful nation state, which was really sort of the envy of Europe, and to see the erosion of the sense and the political genius behind those moves and to see it reduced to a series of fashion decisions and ones that ultimately don't tend to the needs of the nation as a whole um, to have that personified in the wigs was a really smart uh, I, I thought it was just a very clever little bit of writing on the part of uh, of Gombrich so for any of you who are interested in that book it is a children's book it's a highly readable history of the world though and it's a very short one uh, it's called a little history of the world by by um E, I think it's E. H. Gombrich. I know him as Ernst Gombrich, um, better known as an art historian. But I think one of his best books is is actually a originally in German um, book about uh, about history. And I think that is that is it. Um, I will finish Assassin's Creed for sure. I will do my best to overcome the. Um, I'll do my best to overcome the problems I was having today. I think I just need to do a full reset of my computer before I, um, before I play, uh, before I play the title or before I play the game. Um, but uh, we've hit the limit of our time together, so um, I will leave it to. Let's see who we're gonna host. I'm actually a little curious uh, what Kilgore's up to, because he is playing a game called Cyclones, which I've never seen before. Um, but yeah, anyways, thank you everybody for hanging out. I know it was a smaller viewership, but especially you, Ruby Red Blaze, it was great to have you in chat to talk about um, various martial arts and things that worked in the Assassin's Creed games, things that didn't work in them. I do quite like this title. I'm a little disappointed that I'm not able to stream it a bit better. But I will do my best to minimize the problems that we run into for next week. If I get a chance to do it over the weekend, I will. And the next planned stream will be on Monday for Stellaris. Uh, Wednesday will always remain um, a Cult of Simulator cast, but there may be a uh, there may be a, a Dirty Rectangles on Wednesday. If there is, I will tweet out when I'll do uh, if I'm going to that instead. Um, and then. The Friday is more or less Assassin's Creed Unity until we finish, but I will do my best to, to go on. Yeah, it, that would be great, Ruby Red Blaze. And I'll, um, I will look into seeing whether or not I can do some reading streams again in the future, because there are a couple of, there's a couple of projects that I would, I'd like to do if I can. Um, it was a pleasure to have you, uh, it was a pleasure to have you in chat. Um, for those of you who are in chat and were lurking, yeah, Culta Simulator is great fun, so I'll definitely be doing doing, doing that on uh, on Wednesday. Um, for those of you who do want to hang out for a raid, um, we will be going over to Kilgore Trout. Oops, that is the wrong link. Again, he's playing a game called Cyclones, which I've never seen before, but he is a member of the GOG stream team, a very good friend of the streams, and uh, even if you just want to put it on and give him the extra concurrent view, he's a really great guy. Um, with an impressive movie collection as well as a game collection. So I always feel good uh, hosting him at the end of the night. Um, for those of you who are done with Twitch ton for tonight, I don't blame you. I am too. Um, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next time. So. <laughs> exactly, Ruby Red Blaze. Have a great, have a great sleep and have a good night, everyone else.